but don't breathe on me. I'm a believer in nobody. Won't let me leave cause I've seen something. Hope I don't sneeze, I don't. <sighs> really, we just need to feel something. Only pretending to feel something. I know you're dying to run. I wanna turn you around. Please remain calm. The end has arrived. We cannot see you. Enjoy the ride. This is the moment you've been waiting for. And call it a warning. This is a war. It's a parasite. appreciate you guys joining us. Hope you enjoyed the intro song, as we're already getting comments on it. <laughs> Billy, thanks for joining. Billy. He's never late. Welcome to the All Things BMX Show, live from the RITM studios here in the busy metropolis of Heartland, Michigan. This is episode 44, No Quitting, with Terry Honest. How are you, Tara? I'm good. How are you guys? We are fantastic. This Great. is the first time we have a guest on internationally yeah true yeah That's yeah amazing. just north of the border very nice <laughs> our canadian friends thank you <laughs> for joining us uh yeah. i am justin tompkins longtime lover of bmx and a fan of anything that has two wheels on it sitting next to me the host Ooh. the man with the last name himself <laughs> <laughs> chris beer how hey, are you doing great good evening everybody thanks for stopping by Man, we're glad that you're here this evening. Our sound guy didn't show up again. Evidently, he <laughs> likes not getting paid like the rest of us and decided yep. to quit. Yep. Something about, I don't know, racing. They, they are. Yeah, that's what I heard. In this chilly -er weather. That's what yeah. he says. We don't know. <laughs> we're not sure. Thank Paul you. is going to be joining us a little bit later on, making sure the sound levels are right. And uh, he'll be joining us from that wonderful... Just shithole town of Burton. <laughs> if you want, just Google it. We it almost is, made it. it. Nope. It was close, we wasn't it, buddy? It. it was close. We almost he made it. He got a couple sentences in without <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, as I told Tara, you're fine to throw the F-bombs and cuss bombs around and just see how red Chris gets. So sitting behind Chris and I at the Gate 9 Producers Perch, we have none other than the badass woman in the back. Melissa, how are you? I'm great. Welcome to the show, everybody. Ready for a great night, Tara. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Oof, Ready to yeah. rock? No, thanks for having me, guys. We Ready to rock and roll? Excited. And ladies. <laughs> That's right. Um, As always, we got another action packed show. And our guest this evening is brought to you by the Mighty Moe's BMX Cruise Video Chat Hotline. You know that guy, right? 
Who, me? Yes, you know him. Yeah, I know Mighty Mo. <laughs> Who doesn't know Mighty Mo? Yeah. I'm, I'm finding We're, there's not yeah. too many people that <laughs> don't know Mo. Words out of my mouth, Chris. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Great guy. Moses Tillman. And uh, we may or may not have another Jeremy Ames voicemail segment. We're not sure yet, but uh, if we do, we're definitely going to get it on, and it's brought to you by the good people at Yellow Cat Gates. Uh, and also, our intro is brought to you by our good friends over at Nate's Painting. News, rumors, and gossip It's going to be coming up a little bit later on, which is an abridged version, very short this evening, so we can dedicate more time to our guests, is brought to you by our good friends at Gate 9 Number Plates. It's time to get your drinks. Tara, do you got yours? Yeah. Cheers. You guys ready? Oh, a girl after oh. my own heart. Yes. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of red Billy, for you. Billy, we're ready, my friend. All right. <laughs> All right. Nice. Get a, it's time to get that drink ready. Grab the Mandingo Pickles. Don't be late for the gate. Gates. Chris. Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, we really quick want to make sure you know that our show is available on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. You can follow. This is the live stream version, which is sponsored by our good friends over at BMXmania.com. Make sure you check them out. Make sure you like our Facebook page. Give us a thumbs up on the... Uh, Facebook feed, subscribe to YouTube, give us a thumbs up there as well. If you're enjoying the show, get, share it with your friends. Get the word around so folks can find us. Also, we do have a podcast version of the show. It streams on, you can download that off of all your podcast sources, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, on and on and on. Those are sponsored by our good friend Joe Doherty over at BMX In Our Blood Podcast. So you can find us there for the podcast. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for the live stream. And if you have any news, rumors, or gossip, ideas for the show, guests you want to see, email us. We'd love to hear from you at all things BMX show at gmail.com. All right. Thank you, Chris. All right. You know, we're going to go listen to our friends that have the fastest gate in the business. Yeah. That's our so, friends over at Yellow Cat. So we want to make sure everybody gets your questions in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from, and we're going to go hear from the folks over at Yellow Cat. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the game. Riders ready, watch the game. All right, we are back. And yes, we're going to fix YouTube in 38 seconds. In 38 seconds. Maybe a little bit longer than that, but we want to welcome you guys back to the show this evening. 39, so. Um, and you guys that are new to the show, as we come back from our commercial breaks, it's our time that we check in with Melissa and the producer's perch back there from gate nine she'll be getting all your questions and all social media brought into this show and uh we're going to hand it over to chris all right all right again tara white welcome into the show thank you for joining us tonight um we're going to start out where we always do all our guests is how did you start in bmx where did you hear about it how did you find out about it get into bmx how'd that happen uh, well, I grew up, I'm a West Coast girl, so I grew up in California, and there used to be this BMX track off the side of the freeway, uh, off the 57 freeway, and I would be in the car with my mom, and I would see the track all the time, and I was just, like, totally enamored by it. I had no idea what it was, or, mm. but um, I was just, I kept, I would just basically beg her to go to stop in to see if we could check it out and um so she did so she we just went there one night and i just watched like i i don't know i watched for like hours just watching them race and this is orange y bmx so this is like oh wow this yeah. is like the place of right. all the places you know all the tracks that you'd see um so it's packed you know tons of motos mm -hmm. and um yeah i don't know i just kind of like somehow convinced my mom to let me try it i just um, so I loved it without ever having tried it. Really? That's what, yeah. That's real. How old were you? Uh, it's like 11. 11? Okay. Yeah, and so this is like, what, 1988? 88, okay. So, All right. 
cool yeah deal. so uh so so when you start out did you just like use the loner bike and just check it out or how, how'd that go um i don't know i mean i think i had some like shitty powder blue huffy or something <laughs> from like pet boys yeah. and I, but yeah. i just thought it was the coolest thing and i just thought it looked so fast and so anyway yeah like i went out there on that clapped out thing <laughs> and then I got I got into it and started, you know, like going to race um, mm-hmm. like a couple times a week. And then I think when once my mom knew I was going to be serious about it, um, I went and she got me a a pink and white CW. Oh wow! Um, yeah, like that's a nice oh, first man. bike, eh? I would own that. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it weighed like ninety pounds. Like, I mean, the thing was like, I mean, that's a machine. I it, yeah, right. it was. Um, yeah, it was. So anyway, yeah, I just kind of that's how I got into it, and my mom was totally behind me um, doing it, and just I think she just honestly she put me in whatever just to keep me out of trouble, and um. Mm-hmm which is a really good idea at the time. I was going to say that implies so, you were a troublemaker. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I was. Well, I think she just knew if I wasn't busy, I wasn't doing stuff all the time, yeah. I would definitely get into shit. So, oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so just got into it. And then, I don't know, just like I've raced from 11 years old on until, you know, so- yeah. Until I got hurt, so. Okay. So so when you started, how, how long before you started hitting the nationals and, you know, that type of thing? Um, I think I was, I think it was when I was, yeah, 12. Uh, I think it was like that next year. Um, I was racing locally and I was, I was doing pretty well locally. And then I got picked up by Aussie Racewear. And so, and they had a really solid program. So we were going to some nationals already uh, when I was 12 and wow. was, was like doing okay. I wasn't like going out and setting the world on fire or anything, but I was kind of hanging a little bit with some of the, some of the other girls that uh, had been racing since they were a lot younger. I think, you know, some of the girls I was racing against, it started when they were like, six seven years old like michelle mm-hmm. gibson and mapuana and um kim bozart and um a lot of those girls so okay. um yeah, yeah just started racing nationals and then i don't know it was probably the year after that i was i was hitting up a lot of nationals i don't know how many a year but quite a few wow so so that was your first sponsor then was ozzy ozzy racewear yeah, Aussie okay. Racewear. Okay. Yeah, they were such a rad team. It was such a family. I mean, BMX is such a family. Right. Like, yeah. as you guys know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it was just like, they were a bunch of my brothers. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was it was such a good time. Great. Okay. So, so how long did you race BMX? And then somewhere in there you transitioned over to the mountain bike side of things. Yeah, um, I was, I raced BMX till, I don't know, I guess I was probably, I don't know, I guess I was probably like 17. Um, I mean, by that time I had, uh, I was, I was racing for Haro. I was on their factory team. Oh, so nice. it was, um, which was actually ended up being really, really cool. Um, I, was the first female on Haro factory team. So it was myself, Billy Griggs, Kiyomi Waller, Larry Cambra, um, and Tony Delgado. Uh, um, wow. So nice. it was, that was, it was just the five of us. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I raced up until then. And then that's when I transitioned into mountain biking. And Haro was my first mountain bike sponsor. So it just sort of segued okay. nicely into that. So when when you did the mountain bike, did you do BMX as well, or did you switch one to the other? Just was it like a clean break, or did you do both? Or it was kind of a clean break. I mean, okay. at that point in time, um, women were getting women were pros. We were we were pro racers. We were getting paid, <laughs> um, but mountain biking was just exploding. Mountain biking um, at the time in the mid nineties 
was like this new sport. Like it's funny, it came it came from like hippies, like Mount right. Tam, you know, like Northern California hippies, and then all of a sudden it like turned into uh, a lot of outside sponsors. Like every team had a massive outside sponsor, whether it was like Mountain Dew or Volkswagen or Subaru or every every team had a car sponsor, and so there was a lot of. It so, was, so there was well, some money to be made there. There was there was money to be made, and so um, <laughs> I was like, okay, let me get this a go because there were already some BMXers, like Lopes and Lee Donovan and you know Pistol Pete and Billy and you know Toby yeah. Henderson. Like yeah. all those guys were were racing um, transition from BMX to mountain biking, and they were all doing really well. So sure. I think there were you know some of us that were. Um, sort of that next sort of wave, I guess, that we're like, all right, let's give this a go. Wow. All right. Uh, okay, so... I'm still fixing the YouTube feed. They, uh, <laughs> I believe, honestly, I think this is... They've actually got us blocked. Oh, no. Yeah, so uh -oh. I'm working on it. They so didn't, I'm sorry uh -oh. if I seem like occupied, your open, uh, your opening monologue music? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't yeah, what know. did you do? I don't know. <laughs> they the, it's the, all caught up with you now, the Justin. The servers have overloaded, man. The servers are overloaded. That's what we're going Are you with. saying we crashed YouTube? I think so. <laughs> I'm working on it. Wow. I'm working on it. Yeah. Oh, That's entirely possible. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's see here. So we started talking about sponsors. We switched over to mountain biking. Um, so what what kind of inspired you to do the mountain biking? Was that just the, the money side of it? Like, hey, some people are making money here and they're they're doing well. These BMX guys, or was there any any more to that? Well, it just kind of I don't know. It seemed um, as far as I don't know. I guess maybe being a woman racing more of a viable option for mm -hmm. a career um you know with with bmx yeah we were making some money but it wasn't like like it is now you know with with what you know you can make you know what you know a lease post can make on a weekend and back to back to back to back so um i mean it was it was still a big deal for us but yeah i mean in mountain biking we're you know you're you're talking like, you know, first place, you know, just from a race at the time you'd make five grand and then you'd, you know, if you had a bonus structure, maybe your first place was a five grand from your sponsor. And that was just from oh. like one sponsor. So, I mean, you, you, and then you made a salary on top of that, like a good salary. So, okay. so you um, had like a contingency program with the, the like, let's say co-sponsors, like goggles, yeah. grips that type of thing yeah exactly or you know like shimano um you know you, you had a bunch of um other sort of bonus structures that you had so okay i mean i know i'm sitting here and i'm like yeah it's all about the money um it was nice i mean you i mean well, for me i just wanted to have a career i wanted if, to be able to do what i loved and make an actual career out if of it you're, and, and, and yeah yeah well if you're fortunate enough fortunate enough to make money at doing something you enjoy doing, that's awesome. More power to you. Right, right. Yeah, never work a day in your life. Isn't that what they say? That's what I've heard. That's what they say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to interrupt just for one second. Justin, sure. I think it's YouTube in general. I don't think it's you. Okay. Because uh, any other thing I'm checking, and there's some chat in, talk in the okay, chat cause... that other <laughs> YouTube things are getting messed up. So we apologize to everybody. It doesn't appear that YouTube's going to be our friend this evening. So join us on the other social media <laughs> outlets yeah. and Hopefully keep, they can keep hear going us, right? with us. The, yeah. One of the biggest guests, and YouTube decides to take a night off. Yeah, it kind of seems like it's tomorrow not morning. Us. <laughs> They've been hacked. Or tomorrow something. morning, I'm going so Karen. <laughs> first thing, Watch first out. thing. Karen's crazy. So, um, Tara, I'm just curious. Did you um, catch any? I, I guess I'll use the term flack from from BMX friends or anything like that when you decided to kind of jump ship if you will and go the mountain biking route i mean i know everybody's family and everybody supports but there's also bmx and then there's mountain biking <laughs> yeah no i mean 
Well, at least not to my face. Okay. <laughs> yeah. right. I don't know. Maybe they said something when I wasn't there, but no, I mean, I think everyone totally got it. Like there were, there were a lot of, um, it wasn't just myself either. There were, there were other BMXers that were, you know, kind of testing the waters to see how they would do. And so, yeah, nobody, nobody ever said anything to me. Uh, about you know why are you racing mountain bikes or, or well, anything good. like that? So yeah, it was everyone was really supportive actually. Well, and it sounds like at that point quite a few other male and female riders had done the same type of thing. So you know, like you said, Billy Griggs, he was one of our guests a few what month a month or two ago. We had Billy, at, well maybe a little longer than that, yeah, but he talked while. about that. It's been a while, but. He, he he was interesting with all the, the mountain biking and everything. We talked with him, too. So um, I also see here, let's see, you turned pro in 96. So when we say we turned pro, we're talking pro mountain bike, correct? Yeah. So the first uh, year, basically, I guess a well, year and a half or so that I was racing, I was still a junior. Okay. Um, okay. So you ha you had to wait till yeah you were eighteen to turn pro. So even if you they would they would allow you to race in the junior category and in the pro category, but you wouldn't get it was like you wouldn't get points for the pro category. You could race and you could see where you would stack up, but mm -hmm. you weren't getting any points. Hmm. So so yeah, then I as soon as I could I turned pro and. Um, and just yeah race pro ever since okay so you got something Melissa? oh i was just gonna um take a pause and catch up in the chat for a okay, second here. sure let's let's, um, let's see who's what's going on in it's the chat. a busy night already so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm just i think it's easier if i just list these guys off because it's been a busy night uh billy's with us uh the turtle liam is hanging out rick carter's checked in um oh look at that amanda beer is listening <laughs> hey amanda how you doing there kiddo <laughs> she says careful yeah, dad you're careful dad your daughter's listening she says hey i'm always good <laughs> t-bones with us uh autumn's checking in from the west side hey. uh lots of florida peeps joining martin Kennard is with us um uh, let's see don I'm going to say, is it Mulvey Hill? Liberty BMX is in the house. Tracer Finn is joining Tracer. us. He is, oh, shit. he is in the airport waiting on a connecting flight. Oh, so hey, Tracer we, Finn. How you doing, brother? Helping him pass the time. <laughs> and I, I must say, talk about some dedication. Uh, Mr. Moses Tillman is checking in from Cancun. Mighty Mo. Because on, when on vacation, you should be tuning into the ATB show. That's right. So he's on a beach somewhere listening. Nice. Um, let's see who else I got in here. Michael Howell from upstate South Carolina is listening. Uh, Mr. Harry Larry has joined us. Says one Turbo. of the great. Oh wow! One of the greatest female writers ever. Speaking of Miss Tara here. Uh, wow, it's an honor. Robert <laughs> Cardoza is checking in. Hey, Robert. Um, who E.T. Else? Uh, Miss Shonda Shaughnessy says hello, Tara. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shonda. Yeah, I got some Ohio friends checking in. Amanda Hills watching. Um, speaking of upstate Michigan, Mike Soto is with us. Pro um, Soto. He's, he's from the Traverse City yeah. area. <clears throat> uh, Screaming Neiman's listening. He says hello, hooligans. And then uh, our podcast sponsor, Mr. Joe Doherty's checking in, says, hello, Hi. everyone. Welcome, Tara. All right. We appreciate you guys listening. Sure. Um, and let's see, Mr. T-Bone and his wife, Darlene, are listening. Oh, <laughs> and Haley the Hare is also listening. So we, we do have some young ears checking in. <laughs> All right. Uh, and last for this check-in, Miss Gate 9, Jenny from the Block, is uh, checking in. Hey, from, Jenny. 
from her room she somewhere. Keep Billy in line. Because I feel like she was telling me a story that her kid and her and Billy all l- listened to us in separate rooms of the house. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Billy's downstairs working. She's in her office, and the kid's upstairs doing his thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that's three more viewers. We could have just one. They could all be watching together. Oh, and our buddy Isaiah, the finisher, is also listening from uh, from Ohio. So Finish. thank you for letting me interrupt, and let, no, that's not the show goes on. That's not interrupting. Hey. Tierra, so, let's talk about the uh, the medals you've had over your time and where they've all come from. Um, interested in hearing the uh, X Games stories here on the medals from mountain biking in the winter X Games. I feel like there's some shininess in yeah. your past. <laughs> there's, uh, well, first off, I don't know what the hell we were doing on snow. Like, that was a shocker to me. They basically just call on the phone. They're like, hey, you want to do the X Games? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And they're like, yeah, okay, it's in snow. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, in snow. Like, what? I don't know what to do. Why do you? They're like, yeah, so, the purse is 20 grand if you win. I was yeah. like, I'm in. Man, right. <laughs> yep, we'll figure it out, but we're going. We'll figure it out when we get there. It's yeah, all downhill. And then, so, yeah, well, so what, yeah, what? But it's sketchy. Like, if, they, if it's not super hard packed, I mean, oh, I can't well, even imagine. Just, Can you kind of give us a little, of, like a rough idea what what it was, what it was like? Uh, like what what was the track or what was the course? It was just it was it was I don't know it was sketchy. They they had a couple different um, events. Like one of them was just sort of a speed event. So you basically were red, racing head to head with someone. You come out of a gate and it was just like it was like a ski jump. I mean, there was no jump, but it was just like you were just going straight down snow. Oh. Um, and you were just trying to beat the person next to you. Just and straight I remember, down the hill, no curves. Yeah, no, uh-uh, no, oh, no okay. jumps, no turns, no nothing. It was just straight down. Uh, it was just yeah, the speed, not like speed event. Um, and I remember I was racing Katrina Miller, uh, who was just yeah, just unreal racer. She's an Aussie, and uh, but she's tiny. And so they were trying to figure out because weight played a big part in that oh, sure. whole event. Yeah. And so both her and myself didn't, we, you know, I don't know, like 120 pounds or something. And so she, um, she, her mechanic went to the local fishing store and bought a bunch of fishing weights and then <laughs> put taped them, taped them under her bottom bracket. So then she came out when she got some cranks going and then it just, yeah, her weight just started to carry her down, and she ended up getting, like, I don't know, second place or something. I was off the back in that event. Like, I had no chance. Oh. Um, but then the other event was, like, basically you came out of the gate. I think it was, like, six riders in the gate. Wow. I don't think it was eight. I think it was six riders in the gate. And, like, everyone had uh, spikes through their tires, so, like, metal spikes to just grab the snow. Okay. And yep. um, yeah, I don't know. Like I got a super solid hole shot. Um, I had like lane one, so I had the inside coming into the first turn, and um, I got passed by someone coming over top of me, and then my foot slipped. Like I went off the tabletop, and my foot slipped and went behind my um, behind my seat, and then my when I hit the ground, my suspension compressed. Oh. And then it just ripped, just ripped my leg. But, oh. yeah, it was just like, as soon as I could get back on my pedals, I got back on my pedals, started pedaling, um, and then just, and then passed the um, the girl that was in first. And then, yeah, like, I don't know, won it. It was just like, I had so much adrenaline. Um, so, yeah, um, gold medal in that event. And then... I don't remember, if I'm being honest, the other um, events that I uh, that I got. I got two silvers and a bronze, but I <laughs> what? So, I've hit my head a lot, you guys, like <laughs> way too much. So well, you guys can't expect me to remember a okay. lot of stuff. But we know it was I a lot of them. Got, <laughs> well. Yeah, I got a gold, two silvers, and a bronze. So pretty proud of those. Awesome. And, well, I mean, that was that was cool for mountain biking. Oh, it's X Games, so you know it's going to be crazy. They're not going to have anything standard. It's got to be all, you know, crazied up. It's the X Games. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was really good. I mean, what made it really hard was when the snow started to melt. Like you wanted it to be cold. You didn't, I hated being cold, but you wanted it to be cold because you just wanted the spikes to be able to grab into the snow. But then as soon as the sun came out oh. and the snow started to melt and it got a little mushy. Yeah. Oh my God. It made things so difficult. It's like riding on a Slurpee. Yeah, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Yep. Just sinking everywhere. It was just a mm. shit show. Yeah, that's the same thing when you're skiing, snow skiing. You don't want that slushy, slurpy stuff. All right. So X Games was pretty cool. Then I how can't get YouTube to work? And I was not telling to, you, it's not I was you. To, Tara, I was trying to pull up some video of your race in '99 to show people the snow cross and. Uh, Nothing. It's not. No, so YouTube we, is not we, working. We apologize. Typically, that's uh, one of the outlets we we weigh heavy on. Uh, so we apologize about that. We'll Maybe we could share it on our Facebook later. Just everyone, um, everyone, keep sharing it. We appreciate it. Yeah. Um, tell us how you got the nickname uh, T Rock. How, how'd that come about? Uh, actually, it was just recently. Uh, <laughs> like, kind of through my race career, I was just always T. Um, but then once I started playing basketball, um, just in the last couple of years, one of my teammates, I don't know, just randomly started calling me T-Rock. So it's, I wish I could say that there was a way better story behind <laughs> that, but it was just basically like, it just came out of her mouth one day, T-Rock. And I was like, all right, we're going to go with that. So, so no I like nicknames. So, uh -huh. I mean, I don't know when I raced, it was, I mean, my, you pronounce my last name Giannis, but so many people would just call me lanes um <laughs> so yeah like it was either that or t so now it's i got a t rock in there i cool. <clears throat> i got a question for you from the the chat tara and i think some of this we're going to kind of touch in as we continue learning about your story but i i'm guessing maybe you can give uh, this mom some advice so um, Amanda Hill who happens to be the mom of the finisher Isaiah whom I think most of us remember his story but um, so she put she puts in the chat my daughter who's 11 broke her arm racing back in June she had since been racing but is having fear issues with her corners do you have any advice to help her or is this something she's going to have to work through herself oh man that's uh it's kind of um I don't know. I think that's kind of a tough one. I obviously when you when you have a crash and you're trying to sort of deal with that, um, there's so many times that that's all you think about is just that. Um, but it's sort of like I remember when I was coaching mountain biking um, a little bit, and you'd go into like you'd, you'd see this downhill part of the section, and it would have a rut in it, and of course, everybody that I'm trying to coach, they're really, really nervous about this rut because they don't want to fall once they get in it. Um, or they want to stay out of the rut. It's like one or the other. Like if you're in it, like you got to just commit to it. But if you don't want to go in it, um, it's sort of like you can't look at it. And, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. It's like every time somebody always just stares right at it. And whatever you stare at is exactly <laughs> that's where you're going to go. Where you're going to so, go, yep. Um, so I don't know, like, it's such a mental game where you have to just really, the last thing that you want to think about is crashing. You want to believe that you're going to get through the turn and you're already thinking about what's on the other side of the turn. Like you're not just focused on the turn. You're, you're, you're focused on the next straightaway. And then once you're in that straightaway, you're focused on the next straightaway. So it's not something that's directly in front of you, but way ahead of you. And just trying to, I don't know, I think get that through through your head. But, I mean, it is it is difficult, and especially when you're 11. Um, you know, I think it takes, Jesus, I mean, I think I only just figured that out when I was 35. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, these are, this is like years and years of, like, mental stuff that I've kind of worked through. But that would be my, my sort of my best advice is just always focus on something that's way ahead of you, not – directly in front of you. I think that's great advice. That's good. Yeah. Thank you for answering that. Are we gonna... Hopefully it helps. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. So so if you guys have any more questions, you want to get those in the chat, we're going to head over and grab a commercial here real quick from our folks over at... Which one are we going to? Magic? No, I'm not going to pick them. Oh, okay. 
I'll, let's play roulette. All right. We're heading to- hey, Metro Detroit, it's time to experience the coolest store you've never been to. Magic Motorsports in Waterford. Discover over 40,000 square feet of savings. From motorcycle parts, accessories, and service, to hoodies, coats, jackets, and sunglasses from Oakley and Spy, and so much more. Looking for that perfect gift? You'll find it here. Get big discounts on everything every day. We also carry the area's largest selection of BMX bikes and accessories. And we change motorcycle tires while you wait. Magic Motorsports on Dixie Highway, just west of Telegraph in Waterford. <laughs> oh my gosh. Unless he's YouTube. Dad. Hey, we want to say thank you to our friends over at Magic Motorsports. You guys are looking for anything BMX related, go talk to these folks over at Magic Motorsports, Waterford, Michigan. They got it on the floor. You can check it out, touch it, feel it, take it home with you. Ride it in the parking lot. They got them. Uh... Pay for it first. Oh, pay for it first. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't just take it home. You got to pay for it they first. They frown on that. that. <laughs> yeah, that could be a little rough. <laughs> they even have them fancy e-bikes over there that you can ride that you don't have to pedal Holy to. Holy so. cow. 40,000 square feet of goodness, hey? Yeah. It's, oh, it's uh, awesome. It is. It's it's a bike rider's paradise there. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Or motorcycles, awesome. snowmobiles. They got everything. They even got riding lawnmowers and... They got it all over. You got to go check it out. It ain't like Chris. They got racing lawnmowers? What? Yes. No, no, <laughs> Yes, no. they do. Ooh, what a great <laughs> idea. <Racing Bro. laughs> yes, they, they got them Hustler. And anyone that cuts grass knows what I'm talking about. They got that Hustler mo- uh, lawnmower over there, man. Isn't and that bad boy mowers? Isn't they've got all of them, okay? And yeah. you can race them. May- Jim probably could build you a racing bar stool over there. They probably could. So go check them There's out. There's an event for, all, for you, Chris. All you, that would be sweet. <laughs> we could sponsor that. I might get on that yeah. one. <laughs> you know. As long as the blades are removed. <laughs> no, bar stools. We're talking about putting a motor on a bar oh, stool. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> I like my bar stools to stay where they are. <laughs> at the bar. <laughs> it's a lot safer at the bar. <laughs> there you go. Especially when you're drinking. Eh? <laughs> right. 100%. So, so you have anything else in the chat for us, Melissa, or are we good to go? Um, Moses was wondering if you, uh, when you, when did you land your giant sponsor? Um, I think, um, God, when did I, I think I signed with giant in like 2002. It was right after, uh, I rode for Yeti and, uh, yeah, they were, yeah, I don't know. They just nice. They called me up, and I was stoked because it was a pretty, you know, obviously yeah, it's and you're pretty like, massive yes, company. I'm in. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I will take that job. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so yeah, so, and I rode for them for, I guess, five years because I got hurt in 2007. Ah, so, uh, okay. so I was with them. That was the longest um, sponsor in mountain biking that I had. I like it. So yeah. Giant was the longest. Mountain biking sponsor. Mountain biking sponsor. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Because yeah. when you said Yeti, the first thing my brain went to was the thermal cup. The coolers? Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. coolers. I'm like, no, no, no. I know they make bikes. I know they make bikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally make, different. I rode for Yeti for two years, and then I rode well, my – so I rode for Haro, I think, for two years when I first switched over from BMX, and then I signed my, my first big contract um, – in 97 was specialized and I rode for them for three years uh, mm. and then went from specialized to Yeti Yeti to Giant. Wow. Nice. Those are, some, the... those are some big names in the yeah. mountain bike world, I, I believe. I, I am very... We're learning that world, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not very versed in the mountain bike world, but uh, we try. Um, <laughs> one, more, one more question. Um, uh, Shonda, Two part wants to know. Two part. Two part question. <laughs> First part, what was your favorite track or race? Second part, out of the NBL Super Girls, who was the coolest? Cool. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> you know if if, if yeah. it, you know if the you answer know Shonda. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's <Bye>. reaching. <laughs> <laughs> I I gotta say, okay, I'm, I'm answering the second part of that question first, but like for me, so I grew up racing ABA, right? West Coast, and yep. I always wanted to like I would always hear about NBL and how good, like how fast those girls were. And I was just like man I gotta I gotta get out to some NBL races and I gotta I gotta check this out like I gotta see if I could like hang with these girls 
and I, I just like rock up and it was just like, fuck, they were fast. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And they're like, yeah, anyway, so, um, but I just remember everyone being so <laughs> cool. Like, I loved hanging with those girls Excuse so me. much. Like, we had the funnest times. Um, so, yeah, anyway, yeah, Shonda, you'll always be one of my faves. Like, I miss you, girl. Like, it's been way too long. I am um, sure that was the answer she was looking for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true, though. Like, never saw her, like, without a smile on her face. Oh, like, that's a good way to ride. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. My favorite track, like... I mean, if we're talking NBL. We can do both. Why don't you do both, okay. yeah. All right. So I think probably my favorite track, NBL, was The Grands. Mm. I think oh, it was Louisville? The Grands. Yeah, it was just so smooth, and it was just mm -hmm. wide, and it was just like a drag strip. and. Um, it, it's fun. Oh. And it was long. It was downhill, like coming out of that first turn and the second turn, like, yeah. yeah. And then by the what fourth turn, you were just sucking wind so bad. <laughs> um, but I love that track, and I just I don't know. Like I think the memories that I have from that track, um, like nice. just so many different memories that I have. Even when I like not even racing, like going to get McDonald's with like Craig Reynolds and just. Ah. Yeah, you know, like I don't know, just things that I have in my memory banks. But um, yeah, well, that, I love that track. I love the Christmas classic. Hated the track, but like <laughs> love the Christmas because it was always so bumpy. It was just mm -hmm. unreal. Yeah. So it was just like you're just going over it, and you're just like barely can make it to the first turn, and it was rough going. But I loved being at that race too. Um, yeah, I don't know, like ABA yeah. track. Mm -hmm. yeah. First one that came to mind was, and I know I'm missing some. Like there, well, there's two: Black Mountain right. in Arizona. Okay. Loved that track. Yep. Um, and then Lemoore, Lemoore in California. Um, okay, and that, so that one. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, L Louisville seems to be a very popular one with a lot of our guests as their favorite track. So, yeah, agreed. Yeah. Now your favorite or, mountain bike course. Oh man. Mm. Um yeah, I don't know. I think um probably Mount Saint Anne, which okay. is in Canada, it's in Quebec. Uh super gnarly. Um so many different so many different parts to it where you're like outside the trees, super high speed, then you duck into the trees. It always rains. So all the rocks and the roots are super slimy and you're just like fucking hanging on for your dear life. <laughs> just like, just God, let me get to the end. And if you make it and you get like a top five, <laughs> like you don't even have to win. Like you just want to get a top five. Top and, five, you're happy. <laughs> and yeah, you're happy. I mean, honestly, I was top 10 and I was stoked. So uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, like, I don't know. There, there's, there's so many different, um, I guess, tracks or, um, or, or downhill trails or, or slalom races that, mm -hmm. that I remember for so many different reasons, but, um, yeah, BMX, they were just, and there's so many, there's so many races throughout the year. I'll tell you what right. the shittiest one was. Yes. Um, please. Um, <laughs> so she's <laughs> just, I think, actually now, don't now that say, I'm going to say it, I'm say, like, oh man, was that the track? Don't say Waterford um, Oaks. Don't say Waterford Oaks. Don't say Waterford Oaks. That's please all no, you got to do. No, no, no. I wasn't, I wasn't going to, um, um, no, it was, it's actually, it was Stockton. And it wasn't because the mm. track was necessarily that bad, but it rained so much and they didn't know what to do and they were going to run the race no matter what. And so they put, I think the first thing they tried was kitty litter and then the next mm -hmm. thing was hay. So by Sunday, it was just this like quagmire of shit that you were riding through. Oh. And they had so what the pros what, what the the pro guys did I think I don't know who the first guy to do I don't know if it was Billy, but basically what they did was let's just say it was Billy Briggs, uh, Billy Griggs took yeah. took off his number plate, 
grabbed one of the kids' bikes that was a five and under, put his number plate on that bike and stood in the gate with that little kid's bike. And when the gate went down, he ran that track and he freaking won. <laughs> anybody trying to ride sucked. Like it was horrible. So then all the pro guys started to do that. They just slapped their number plate on like a little kid's bike and they were all running this track. And it was just like, that's hilarious. I can't even believe this right now. Well, at least, at least Billy, Billy did it first. huh? Oh, I, well, I think goodness. it was him. Yeah. So well, we'll give him credit a, for it. <laughs> Tell yeah, somebody can yeah. prove otherwise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's, let's we should um, call him and find out. But yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe he's watching or listening or he'll catch it in a replay and he can let us know. Uh, so let's see here. You returned to BMX in 2006 in order to train for the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, China. How, how'd that go about? How'd that come to be? Uh, well, so yeah, I've been racing mountain bikes and then BMX got um, – kind of inducted into uh the olympics and right. they were gonna ha they were gonna be there in beijing first first time ever so um i was at that point in in my career i was really trying to figure out my next steps and what i wanted to do and at the t and, you know when i was still racing bmx that was not an option so mm -hmm. um i kind of i kind of just thought i want to give this a go i want to see and i hadn't I hadn't ridden, I hadn't raced BMX for years. And to right. go from, to go from a BMX bike to a mountain bike is a hell of a lot easier than going from a mountain bike to a BMX bike. And uh, just with how twitchy it is and right. 20 inch wheels, the whole everything. So, um, so I started training. I mean, I'd always been training, but I got back, I was getting back on my BMX bike. I was flying out to Colorado Springs and um, I was doing some testing with SRM power meter at the time and, and just trying to make a go of it. Um, and at that time, Mike King was, was running the program for okay. team USA yep, and he was the Mikey coach. and I, yeah. Um, so we've been friends for a long time and so I contacted him and I just said, Hey, you know, I, I, I want to, I want to give this a try, you know, mm -hmm. what do you think? Um, and you know because just being out of the sport for a while like it was a different deal like when i was still racing bmx like there was a lot of talent when i was racing bmx but the difference was the way that the tracks looked from when i stopped racing bmx to when i decided to start racing again it was totally different you know yeah. i mean like well, i thought super, the jumps the super cross tracks were you know they're still totally different yeah, yeah, like they're massive. Like you're starting 30 feet up in the air and you're getting a good run at it, you know, whereas like, you know, our tracks, you know, back in the 90s were not like that, not even close. They, everything was really flat for the mm -hmm. most part and you were just, you know, trying to generate your own speed, I guess, and the gearing was different. And so right. there were a lot of things that had changed in that time. Um, so, yeah, it's just I kind of started training and, went out to started going out to some BMX races and did okay. I wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't, you know, like super speedy. And this is when like Kim Hayashi was racing and she okay. was like winning everything. Yep. And, um, you know, my gates sucked. Oh, well, my <laughs> gates were never good. My gates were always horrible. Yeah. Um, I was always going up and not out. And then I was just kind of having to play catch up at that point. Were but, you making mains? Um, was I, I was making the mains, yeah. Okay, okay. But I just, I wasn't like, uh, you know, I wasn't winning them. And I, you know, it was kind of like, you know, maybe third, fourth. Um, so anyway, I just kind of kept training. And then, um, you know, kind of got the okay that it was, you know, that I could at least go to Beijing. And, and I was kind of like, I think out of the U.S. riders, um I, I was probably, I think there were five that went to try to qualify, maybe six. And I was like, definitely number six. Okay. Um, and so anyway, yeah, I got there and did, went through the time trials basically to try to just get to the, the main event, which was, that's what you needed to do. And yeah. I just, I was, I think, I think they took like, 
they took 16 and I think my times were like around 19th or something. So okay. yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't make it out of those timed events. And I was still like, I remember Mikey coming up to me and saying like, he would watch me and he's like, you got to change your gear. Like your gearing is so off. Um, so like, I just, I was trying to power too much stuff and I, I didn't have the same spin. Like when you watch some of those, those girls race these days, like their spin is unreal. Um, and I wasn't even close to that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it was such a cool experience though, to at least be in Beijing, to, to be, to be able to ride the Olympic track sure. was super rad. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't make the big show. Was so. it fun to ride the track? Or was it scary? How I mean, well, how did you approach that? Was it fun or was it scary? It was it was both, honestly. <laughs> like it was like I think it was the first two jumps I was good. Like, but it was the it was the triple coming into the first, where some of those girls were tripling, and I was like, <laughs> Nah, <laughs> I'm good. No, uh -uh. I'm just gonna roll through. I'm just gonna pump through this. Um, but it's just yeah, it wasn't. I mean, and it, maybe if I had a faster pump at the time, I think I just I needed more time to figure out my gearing I needed more time to um yeah to figure out how to mm -hmm. how to just be more comfortable on the bike because it was so twitchy right. um yeah. but those girls were so they're so good like when I watch those girls race I'm just like fuck <laughs> like I mean if you, like nobody know like if you don't race BMX and, and you've never and you don't know what it's like to be on that gate and in on, on those on those uh, tracks, it's hard to know how good they really are. I mean, they're nope. yeah, unreal. So utmost respect. Yeah, yeah. The the closest I've been is I've been on top of the starting hill and looked down. So yeah, <laughs> that's intimidating in itself, right there. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I can't yeah. even imagine getting on the airplane to go to Beijing at any given point in time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. All right, so then let's see. So we use, might be out of order. Are going to use that as a teaser before we go to commercial? Yeah. Uh, let, Wait, Chris, we want to do let me, this let me, as a teaser? Let me hear that this? teaser right there, right here, this one. This one? Okay. That's your teaser. The, the that sentence, All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, so after the commercial, we're going to talk about September 1st, 2007. The unspeakable occurred. Oh, damn. We're going to be checking yeah, back in go. with that chat <laughs> Boom, son. Here God, we that go. script writing Get is you. amazing. Yeah, it is awesome. <laughs> Somebody killed it on that script. Yeah. Man. It Heavy Pedals BMX Zine. Voted number one by the All Things BMX Podcast Show viewers. Issue three, now out. Make sure you head over to Sloan Bicycle Shop, Ray's MTV, Reggie's and many others pick your copy up now while you're at it make sure you check out our website pick up one of our new t-shirts and our beer koozies to keep those drinks nice and frosty cold on those warm days at the track and trails heavy pedals with a z all right welcome back we want to appreciate each and every one of you joining us this evening for a wonderful show Man, I cut out too early, Chris. You got Dude, your word in. We'll do, me. we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Melissa, uh, how's, the, uh, <laughs> how's that chat room going? Uh, a couple Ooh. of new additions as time has gone on. Uh, Chris Ramy says this is awesome. He's loving it, saying hi. Yep. Um, and Debbie Kelso hey. is checking in what and up, says guys. Tough hi. girls. Yeah, I don't know if she's noticed that uh, she's being represented here in the back of the room. With uh, Justin, oh, yeah. Justin's yeah, we got tough, the tough girls. We got the tough girls jersey out tonight. Because you know he's a tough girl too. <laughs> All right, we'll just oh. let that roll. <laughs> right now, it's taking everything tough to not go fight and YouTube. So, <laughs> so as getting Chris, worked, getting worked up there, Justin. Go. Try and, hey, the good thing dude, is, is that uh, everything's you, being recorded you're right now. A meat sweat, yeah. So dude. It, it can we'll all, get it uploaded. I'll, I'll be able to upload it all. You try to do Chris. Chris. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's not twice. It's not. 
it's it's close. It is. <laughs> okay. So for all of you that are going, what Whoa. the hell is happening? Um, Chris was given a challenge in the pre-show to use a certain phrase somehow in the show, which he was just successful at. <laughs> yeah, but nobody heard it, so it doesn't matter. Well, that's all right. <laughs> so I'm just curious in the chat if anybody picked up on what may have been the catchphrase. And that's not the trivia question. And Chris will <laughs> no, give you a not. ride in the helicopter that he doesn't own. Yeah, there you go. All that's right. right. <laughs> so it's all Chris right. time before our commercial yep. break. All right, we're going to get serious now. It was September 1st, 2007. Uh, you were racing uh, out at Beaver Creek. Why don't you walk through and let our uh, viewers, listeners, kind of know what had happened, and then we'll transition into uh, what you ended up uh, make happen out of that situation. Uh, yeah, so um, not to get too heavy on you guys, but uh, so September 1st, 2007, I was racing a Jeep King of the Mountain race. And um, just, uh, I'll cut it short. I won't make it as long as it, it could be. But uh, I was in the semifinal race and racing against Jill Kittner and uh -huh. came into a section that I had hit in practice every time. Um, but it was, it was a tricky set of, of doubles. It was like three doubles in a row. And uh, Eric Carter actually had designed that track. And... Um, so we, yeah, came into that section, and I was, like, actually, I should back up just, like, briefly, because I remember being in the gate. So this event was a made-for-TV event. It's, it's, so, your, it's your story. Do whatever you want. All right, cool. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, so it was a made-for-TV event, and that basically means that when TV's ready, they would say red course ready, blue course ready, racers ready, go. And then the gate's going to open, so you just need to be ready to go. So we're both sitting in the gate, and I remember just sort of sitting there, and something just felt really off. Like, my goggles didn't feel like they were sitting in my helmet right. Like, my pedal wasn't in the right place. Like, just something just didn't feel quite right. And I don't know if it was, like, a premonition. I don't know. But um, they said, red course ready, blue course ready, racers ready, go. Gate opens. So basically, you come out of the gate, and you're on your own course. For five gates so I'm like whatever on the red course Jill's on the blue course so you go around your five gates on your on a separate course and then you join it's called the Y and then you join and you're both on the same course now so it's like head-to-head -head now for the okay. rest of the way down mm -hmm. and so you race down to the bottom and then after you do that first run based on like if let's say I beat Jill by 0.5 then basically we go back up we switch courses, and then she's got to beat me by 0.51 in order to move to the next round. So anyway, so I'm in the gate, and I've been doing really, really good. I qualified fastest for that race. and um, But yeah, something was just off. Gate opened, and I was just a disaster. Like, I couldn't get my rhythm. I couldn't, I just couldn't figure anything out. And I was so far behind her. I remembered sort of thinking to myself as I was racing, do I keep racing and hope that I try to catch her? Or do I just chill this one, know that I get the 1.5, which is the most deduction you can get, go back up and try to beat her by 1.5, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. So I was like, don't quit, just keep going. So I came up to that section um, with the three doubles and I just, I don't know, I was just sort of like fighting. It was just sort of like this inner monologue of fighting with myself, thinking, jump it. No, don't jump it. Jump it. No, don't jump it. And then, you know, it's like when you're doing that and you're coming up to a double or a jump, yeah. don't do it. <laughs> like you, just, you just shouldn't do it if you're having if you're having second thoughts or if you're questioning it you know yeah. um so anyway so there was a a roller that led into the first lip and it was actually that roller that totally screwed me up i i, I if i'm being honest i don't even remember exactly how it happened but i think i went to like lift up to like manual to pump the back side of that to get enough speed to hit that double and I somewhere in between the roller and the face of the jump something happened 
and I screwed up royally. And so, and I had a lot, of, I had, I mean, a fair amount of speed. So I basically hit, like my head just landed on the face of the jump that I should have been taking off on. Mm. And then, and so that's what, that's actually what broke my neck. I broke my neck um, at C7, which is your cervical seven. And then because I had so much speed, my body had nowhere to go. So I'm clipped in and my my the rest of my body just like fully oh. scorpions. Like I think my feet hit my helmet. Oh. Like Oh my gosh. And so then that's what broke my 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 low back. Um and so then when that happened I just remembered like just rolling back down the face of the jump and just sort of I don't know, I just it was like it's kinda hmm. hard to uh, I don't know, like, I immediately felt pain, like a lot of pain, and I felt sure. like, I felt like I was not laying on a curb, <laughs> which obviously I knew there was no curb there, but um, the the paramedics were probably 50 feet from me, so they were there in, like, no time, mm -hmm. and they, wow. you know, start, like, so, like, my body, but, like, when I was going down, back down the face of the jump, like, I could just sort of feel my legs just sort of flopping. Like, I could feel them, and I could, there was still that sensation, but they were, it was almost like they were somewhat detached from my body. It was just this really weird yeah. sensation. And then once the paramedics got to me, they, mm. I was like, hey, can someone, like, get that log or that stick or whatever it is that's under my low back and just, can you just remove that? And... Like, I remember they were just sort of looking at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> what are you talking right. about? <laughs> You're on and a flat so, face. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, wow. um, so anyway, so we, they start going through like this whole test of, you know, things. The, and the like, protocol they have to go it. through. Yeah. Right. All the protocol. And so um, I could just tell, I mean, I knew I was in a lot of pain. I knew I had done something pretty severe to myself. And um, I also knew by the look on their face. Mm. Like when I looked in their eyes, I was like, yeah. yeah, I think, I think this is really, really bad. Um, mm. Then yeah, from there, um, I, they just like put me in the ambulance went and, you know, like just, I, I don't know, it was probably like a 10 minute ambulance ride. And then they, um, took some scans and then put me in a helicopter and this was all in Colorado um, and then from the yeah, helicopter they flew me to Denver Medical and I went straight into surgery and um, you know I I uh, I don't know it was it was it was super surreal you just you just don't really think that stuff like that's going to ever happen to you. But I will say that um, it was it was interesting because in the last, probably the last couple years of me racing mountain bikes, there were a lot of times, way more than there should have been, where stuff like that was creeping into my head, uh, where I would go to race and instead of, attacking a course and um you know just being in that in the moment and in and, and attacking and and just wanting to go faster i was thinking about the what ifs mm -hmm. well what if this what if that well what if but if i if i crash here that you know, that could severely impair me and whatever and um you know i mean of course now looking back I probably should have retired a couple of years before, <laughs> um, <laughs> but you just, you know, like when you're in it, you're like, you, you kind of, I don't know, I guess maybe you talk yourself out of it. And, yeah. um, I, you know, I, I, it was almost like I didn't want to let that defeat me. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and I don't know if that's what it was, but I think I just, I, I became more fearful um, instead of being a racer and, um, so yeah, that 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 was just a insane part of like time in my life, um, where I basically yeah went in, had surgery, had a couple different surgeries. They put rods in my back, mm -hmm. 
and uh, I, I was actually, in the grand scheme of things, I was, I was very fortunate because I did break my neck, and I could have been a quadriplegic, which is quite a bit different than, mm-hmm. than my life as a paraplegic. Um, and, you know, I have full use of my upper body and, you know, a bit of my, you know, my core and, and trunk control, whereas, um, you know, quadriplegic, it's, it's totally different. Um, For sure. And so, so anyway, yeah, it's, that was, that was a lot of years of, of rehab. And, you know, I think when I was in that rehab hospital, I had zero doubt that I was going to walk out of there. I had no doubt. I was like, I know how hard I can work. I know how hard I can train. Mm -hmm. They're not going to know what hit them. And, you know, I remember my first doctor, um, when I had my surgery, he's like, uh, so you're never going to walk again. And I was like, right, right. Yeah. No. You know, I'm like, yeah, you don't, don't know me, right. but what he does know is he know he knows medicine. <laughs> he knows <laughs> right. pharmacology yeah. injuries. So yeah. minor oversight on my part, but I just wasn't about to hear it at that point in time. And so, well, you have um, to have that attitude, I think, at that point too. That hey, I can get over this. I can, you know. You you have to have the hope. Right. You nailed it, Melissa. You nailed it. Like honestly, if I didn't have that. Um, that hope that I had during my rehab, I think it would have been a way rockier ride for me um, during that particular time. Like I was at rehab for, I don't know, three, three and a half months. And um, I think it would have been way more difficult mentally. Whereas like every day I treated as like a new challenge. And I was like, yeah, I got this. And then obviously, you know, time like came and went and I didn't walk out of there. Um, But yeah, it's, I mean, it took me a long, a long time. It probably, honestly, it probably took me five, six years after that to be okay with my life, with like being in a chair and like knowing that my life can be super fulfilling. And, you know, like I can do most everything that I used to do before. So, um, you know, like long walks on the beach aren't going to happen, but you know, they got power chairs for that. Yeah, exactly. See, you can work around it. You can work around it. Yeah, they really do, actually. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Like it's yeah. So it's like I don't know. It. I think everything was really daunting in the beginning, of course, and Mm -hmm. and I think what crushed me, honestly, I think one of the things that crushed me the most was. My, um, I always saw myself as a racer and first and foremost, and that was what my identity was wrapped up into. Mm -hmm. And that's how I I raced bikes since I was 11. And I, you know, I was now 30 and that's all I knew was racing my bike. So when I didn't have that anymore, I was like, who am I? Like, what, what, like I can't, manual physical labor is not something that I'm going to be able to do. I didn't have a college education. So there was a lot of things that were like swirling around my head that really mm-hmm. scared the crap out of me. Um, yeah. So, you know, I kind of had to just rein it in, but it took a long time. It took a long so, time. Uh, before I just, <laughs> I want to say first off, kudos to all the therapists that you worked with. Cause I think as oh. Justin told you, I, I happen to be an OT. I, I don't work directly with a lot of patients with spinal cord injuries, but I, I have to say, uh, and Justin, I don't know if there's a way for you to get to the picture. Justin showed me a picture of you in your chair, climbing a rope. And oh, I have, right. I have got to know what your arm workout is because it is amazing. <laughs> and and I know, uh, you know, from just a rehab standpoint, how hard it is. So our arms, I, I think most of us understand our arms are not meant to be walked on. And you are literally using your arms every day as your legs. So um, it's amazing that, and, and I'm not, I'm, I don't want to discount that you probably don't have some shoulder injuries, but it is very impressive to see a photo like this because it is very difficult to be in a chair for as long as you have and not develop 
overuse syndromes and things like that in the shoulder. So uh, do you do you do a lot of extra workouts or is it just kind of life for you? I mean, I know we're going to get into your other sports and the adaptive things that you're doing now, but I'm just kind of curious what you do outside. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I'm pretty much in that five to six year, I guess, window where I really struggled. I didn't, I wasn't in sport at all. Uh, I completely okay. abandoned sport. Um, it, I think because I didn't know where I fit in. Well, you were just doing and life I, at that point in time. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to survive at right, that point right. in time. And, and you know, as much as I wanted to get back into mountain biking, I didn't know what that looked like. And I also knew it wasn't going to be the same. It wasn't going to be the same feeling. Mm. So I wasn't going to be able to ride and jump and do things the same way that I had done before. Sure. And so, um, but yeah, I knock wood that I, my shoulders have, have hung in there, um, so far, which is kind of a feat because I've talked to plenty of people who have had tons of shoulder, um, issues because, you know, yeah, you're, I'm pushing all day. I don't get a break. Um, when it comes to that, I have to transfer. So if I, if I want to move from my chair to the bed or, to the shower or whatever, everything is a transfer and I've got to use my shoulders and my arms to do that. So there's some days where I'm just like exhausted, but, um, but yeah, like, I mean, once I got back into sport, I actually started with tennis, which is a sport I never played, which I think was actually ended up being a really good thing because I had never played that sport. So I had nothing to compare it to. Oh, that's an interesting oh. theory. Yeah. Whereas okay. like mountain biking, yeah. I had, you knew what I you were totally missing would, quote unquote. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I okay. knew what I was missing. Um, and then I, basketball was my first love. Before I started racing BMX, I played basketball. And so um, that wasn't a sport initially that I wanted to do because, again, I was going to compare it. So I started playing tennis. I played for like, I don't know, three, four years. And um, and then, then that's what transitioned me back into basketball. So but once I started playing tennis, I was training. Like I was in the gym, I was lifting, I was pushing, I was on court. Um, and so I have pretty much since then, I've been training. So um, yeah, and by the way, that photo, I have to. <laughs> I, have to I don't care if you were hanging funny. for two seconds. The fact that you could That's do that. Exactly <laughs> I said that to exactly Justin that. earlier. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> I don't care if she didn't climb. I don't care how long she held it. The fact that she legit is lifting her body and the weight of that chair, as far as I can tell, <laughs> off the ground was amazing. I love it. That's so funny. Yeah, like I did it, and I was like, I was like, yeah, I feel pretty strong. I, I can do this. Yeah, I'm gonna get to the top. And my friend was doing these photos, and I made it like one, two, three, and I was like. Oh my god! And I'm like, I, I can't do this. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna come back down, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it like one more time, but you gotta get the photo because I can't <laughs> go any it, higher. That's it. That's it. I love it. So well, was good it. for so you. I'm just totally that's still told really everyone awesome. my secret. But and, and, anyway, yeah, it was it was cool. But yeah, like I do I do a lot of I mean everything is my upper body up, upper body training. So um, you know I do a lot of that now, especially playing basketball again. Can we? Uh, is there any? One of the videos you want to do, jump to the access one, the the bio, the wheelchair, any of the, any of those videos you want to share? Oh, we've got that. Oh, one. are you asking me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh well, I don't know. It's totally totally your guys' call. No, nah, they're your videos. So we'll we'll go. Um, What's the one with the um? My vote is the video game one. The oh. whole. <laughs> Yeah, I thought you were gonna start with that one. <laughs> well, you know, but you'd sent over, you had sent over your your uh, Access Hollywood one, so I wanted to make sure if that's oh, yeah. one you want to roll with, we can roll with that one, or any of the other ones. Uh, sure. You can okay. <laughs> she right. needs a refill anyway. That's, so. <laughs> and I know the I Access do. Hollywood. I'm getting low. The Access Hollywood one is longer, so I was <laughs> trying to lean that way. All right, we're gonna be right back. It's. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say, it's not meant to be too depressing, so sorry. <laughs> Everyone it's not there. depressing. That's the thing. Like, it's an inspiration. <laughs> I, it, yeah. It, yeah. It's it's a sad thing that it happened, but the fact and the way that you've turned it around is what makes it amazing. Yeah. All right. All right.
been racing most of my life. It is my life. It's, uh, I've never had a job, you know. Here we go. Terry Giannis, though, grabs the whole shot at the Y section. Terry Giannis out in front. I miss riding my bike more than anything. In the world of mountain bike racing, Tara Giannis is a superstar, a fierce competitor with a win-at-all-cost attitude. She has got to get the whole shot. She's on the faster red board. They collide on the Xbox. Oh. Mule oh. underneath Tara Giannis. Even the injury tally on her website stands as a kind of commitment badge of honor. I broke my collarbone, collapsed my lungs, blew out my knee, all in one crash. But injury never stopped Tara from pushing onward. Advertisers courted her. She even posed for Maxim Magazine's Girls of Extreme Sports issue. But it all came to a crashing halt on September 1st. It is Jill Kinner who's taking huge command right now. Oh, and Giannis is down. Looked like a hard fall. Jill Kinner looking back for Tara Giannis, being attended to by some medical personnel quick to attend to her. This is the helmet from that day, yeah. the day of the crash. It just smacked pretty much right here, landed straight in my head in the front. Immediately, it's just something that I do after I have a big crash. You try to move your toes, try to move your legs. You make sure everything's moving. And I stopped rolling and my legs didn't move. Tara was paralyzed from the waist down. They sent me the footage and I have it on my computer, but... You don't want to see it? I'm just not quite ready to see it yet. <sighs> Looking back, worrying about what might have been isn't Tara's style. While living at Denver's world-renowned Craig Hospital, where she undergoes intense rehab and physical therapy, there is simply no time for what if or why me. When that doctor told you you weren't going to walk again, what did you say to him? I looked right at him and I, s I said, I'm going to prove you wrong. Thank God. <laughs> What's been the toughest part to overcome for you? I can go into, into physical therapy and I can do everything they tell me to do. And I can push 10 times harder than they tell me to do. And I don't understand why my leg won't move. Because I'm, I know I'm trying. That's the frustrating part. Hour after hour, Tara pushes the limit, never losing focus or her sense of humor. You got a little sassy in the pool today, and instead of doing your work, you were mooning Jim, our poor cameraman. Well, yeah. What happened? He just looked like he was kind of walking around a bit, so I thought, you know, why not? I mean, I'm here to get better, and I'm here to, to walk again and, and to get stronger every single day. but. Doesn't mean I have to mope around. I need to take a break. Progress is sometimes measured in inches or less. What was one second nature suddenly becomes a great challenge, like learning to push your way backwards up a flight of stairs. I think I have more good days than bad days. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I really try not to let myself be in a really crap mood, because then I don't accomplish anything. You were just moving your leg. I saw. Wow. And that small movement is amplified in the weightlessness of the water, making pool time a favorite activity. It seems like every time I go in the pool, it's like something happens. Like I can move my leg up and down all around in the pool. You leave here in two weeks. Are you happy? Yeah. I am. I mean, in a way, at first, I Ready? was Ready? scared because this place is sort of like your little, your little bubble and where you're very familiar with things, where the bed has handles on it, where everything here is already built for, for, for me. But, you know, I've learned so much here in the three months that I know I'm strong enough and I'll be fine at home. <sighs> this has happened and yeah, you know what? It sucks. And I don't know why it happened. I don't know if I'll ever know why it happened. I'm going to do everything I can to get better, and that's all I can do. <laughs> ah. 
All right, we are back, and we want to say thanks for everybody joining us this evening, and especially our guest, Tara. Awesome. Thank you. We really, really appreciate you taking time out, especially with the time difference. It's very, very early where you're at right now uh, compared to us, which it's for most of us in this room. It's getting close to our bedtime. <laughs> well, let me just tell you that when, when McGillivray first called me, she's like, hey, can you, I want you to do the show. Da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. She's like, yeah, okay, it's it. It's going to be at, uh, what you say? 8 o'clock Eastern. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Oh, and no, I was no, like, no, no, no. dude, that's like 5 a.m. Oh, my time. She's like, yeah, and then the pre-show is going to be at 4.30. I'm like, 4.30 a.m. You want me to get up? I'm like, 4.30? I'm like, <laughs> okay. Like, I'll wake up at 5, but I don't want to. <laughs> yes. Well, so folks that don't know me. But I wasn't. Oops, hold on. Here yeah, so when, then when she retracted to 5 p.m., I was like, okay, I was like, I'm, I'm down. No, because I was like, I'm like, dude, I'm talking to Terry on it. You know, I was like, I'll, I was all fangirl for like five minutes. Oh, shut up. Come on. All right. We do have uh, Marie on the line. So she right uh, she bribed us uh, with candy and bottles of wine. And, uh, well, the the big thing is you know, Michigan State still beat Michigan this year, so she has to take the never-ending ragging of Michigan State beating her team. She is on the line right now, and she's got two questions for you, Tara. Uh, and we're excited to hear your questions, Marie. And you guys can catch Marie at All Things BMX every day with Marie's question of the question day. Question of the day. Marie, take it away. Oh, you're on the air. Marie. Oh, I'm here. I'm, be I'm back. Okay. Oh, you just cool. I gave you a great intro and... And then she dead aired us. You're going to do me dirty. She dead aired us. Marie, Marie, Marie. So you can catch Marie every day at All Things BMX <laughs> social yeah. media with her Marie I, question I of the have day. A, a, a couple questions for my friend Tara, and I've known Tara since I don't know. I was about sixteen years old, and I've talked to this. Um, I've talked this topic to her before. Um, Tara, tell me what it meant for you, and I've asked this to other you know um people that were on the show i wanted i just actually wanted to say contest contestants but they're not contestants but um tara tell me what it means to you to come to the east coast to race the events oh man like i don't know going to the east coast like it was just sort of like this this sort of thing that i would i just kept hearing about and like just all these girls that were super fast like on the east coast and i was just like i don't know like i kind of mentioned it like touched on it a little bit earlier but um yeah, I just yeah, wanted they, to be they, able they, to... they already asked for my questions so i had to i had to like going my little like full box of questions <laughs> shonda said get off the toilet <laughs> shonda shonda's an asshole so that's all right <laughs> Oh, man. I got a number plate like, autograph like, buyer that said, hey, asshole. It's like, this is so awesome. Wow, that's the best way that you could possibly sign a number plate. Yeah, it is. Nice one. Chalk one up for right Shonda. Here. Points it's, for her. Uh, no, no, no. It was from Marie. It was from Marie to him. Tell Tara how I signed oh. your number plate that I gave to you. Hey, asshole. <laughs> like, that's that's how you that's how you did me right one? there. Uh, I think you should yeah. frame that. I'm oh, I I ran. So here's the thing. Earlier today, uh, the software we use, we lost all. I lost all the graphics. So before oh. I had a meltdown, um, I ran outside and um, I didn't punch anybody or tear down a wall or light anything on fire. Just took a couple deep breaths and I said, "It's gonna be cool. We're gonna be good." But I was gonna go to the store and get frames, and I ran out of time. So that's my story. Now your second question, Marie. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. My first question, um, you know, Terry, you love coming over to the East Coast. I love going to the West Coast, and you were one of the first um, West Coast girls that I met 
that was in the Madden Bees, and you know, you were on Fashion Haro, and I was like a super fan girl at, at this point in time. Um, you know, you remember coming to Florida and driving my Jenny around the Orlando track. Thank you. You know, you remember Dude, like you know, stuff, track. but we all we all did that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know. You're probably like, who is this chick? And I was like, hey, can I go take your truck for a drive? Like, yeah, yeah, I handed you the keys. I'm like, freaking yeah, go drive around. Yeah, I know. And then, and then I, I actually, that was yeah, my first then, car. Oh, hold on. It was I, a I, little I know, Chevy, 89 well, Chevy Blazer. They ask you everything else. So I had to I had to go reiterate my notes here. Hold on one second. Oh, geez. This might take a minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, man. You had all night, Marie. You had all night. This is my last question. Okay. Kara, what does um, full factory in BMX, not mm. now like you, but in BMX mean to you? Now, before you answer it, can we add the caveat? Can you take Marie's question, say what full factory means in BMX, and being you live the extreme high life, and not champagne beer high life, but the extreme high life, in mountain bike, explain what full factory means in mountain biking after you answer the first part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, no, yeah. I, 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 I really Let's want to hear this. BMX, yeah, then exactly. mountain bike, yeah. Okay. okay, so I don't know. First thing that comes to mind when you say full factory BMX, um, like you're flying to everywhere, right? You're flying to all the races. You got your meals covered, you got your hotel covered. Like, you're making some bonuses here and there. Um, but the most factory is when you show up at, like, Hertz or Avis, and your shit is in a Lincoln Continental. Oh. Because, <laughs> yo, every team had, if you were factory, you were in a Lincoln Continental. Oh, my God. You did we, not yeah, show up at the racetrack, like, and you were not in a Lincoln Continental, right? Like, you had yeah. all the pros, like, driving yeah. those things, and you had all the bikes. <laughs> That's stopped. hilarious. Like, it yeah, was, it was a like... way to do it. Well, that yeah. that that's all. Everybody we've talked to that has a rental car story, it's a Lincoln Town Car or a Facts. Lincoln Continental. Every person, <laughs> you know, Harry, Larry, whoever. It's always we were in a Lincoln Town Car or a Lincoln got, Continental. Didn't he get arrested doing donuts in the Pontiac Silverdome yeah. parking lot? Yeah, or yeah. yeah exactly. Harry, Harry, Harry uh, spent the night in Oakland County Jail after doing donuts in the parking lot in the Pontiac Silverdome. <laughs> and Shonda says, Shut with, up. with bikes hanging out the back. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have bikes oh, yeah. on that? <laughs> oh, bikes everywhere. Like, you basically were racing. Right? Like, you had all the bikes just hanging right out the back, <laughs> and you were just racing, just oh, drag racing in these Continentals dude, or the, town cars, whatever. Like, yeah, tr- so to me, like, if you say factory, it was like that, and then, like, rocking up at, like, a Benihana's. Oh. Like, I don't know. Like, there was oh, just my God. certain things. Tara, we would rent out the whole restaurant. For the night. For BMX? Yeah. Oh. We, we, this is BMX. We would rent out the whole restaurant for the night. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be like, I've got, I still got, I'll have to pull this out of my, um, out of your ass? It's in my closet yep. somewhere. Yeah, she is. I've got like one of those little Buddha things that you got from Benny Hanna. Oh, yeah. Totally. And, <laughs> and it's like one of those things that looks, it, it seems harmless, but it is totally a freaking pot smoking machine that you had um uh, it had like the little i don't know i'm not a pot smoker but um like the hose and the carb on it so like no, in, the, but, in the bowl <laughs> like you put the weed in the bowl and you scar it, it but it wasn't a weed machine. i mean i don't know nothing about that thing but i'm just saying like those are the apparatuses yeah, oh, okay, on it Justin, no, like, <laughs> after but, um, i will say this yeah. i'm going to like cut myself off now and Ooh. let Terry get back to her show and thank her again for being part of this because it's awesome and I love her story and we're going to get into more of it and um, mm-hmm. I'll talk to you guys again soon. All right, right thank Marie. you, Marie. We'll and talk to you later. The questions. You can caller. <laughs> caller. You go blue. Anonymous caller. <laughs> go, go blue. You She's got to work that You in. can always catch Marie every. Uh, 3 30 in the morning while she's insomniac posting her question of the day uh at the all things bmx social media outlet so make sure you guys are over there and like them and uh chime in on them and just like that tonight let us know where you guys are hanging out this evening watching the show and where you're racing this weekend if you are racing this weekend 
Yeah. Let us know. Put it in I the know. chat. Let us know. Guys here in Michigan, they got a couple tracks running this weekend. Believe it or not, what's uh, what's the temperature where you're at, Tara? Oh, gosh, this morning it was uh, 32. All right. So the last couple days, actually, believe it or not, in the high five state. Hello, Michigan. That's what we call it. Ripping in the mitten. Whatever. It's backwards, Chris. We're sitting in the studio. No, this way, dude. Uh, oh, my God. It's been like 80 degrees here. No, it's not. Is it? This is Are 80. you serious? 80? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 80 degrees it's here. It's winter. I know. I know. And we've it's got, not winter oh here, God. though. It's not. Oh, we've, well, it's, today it cooled off. But, yeah. It's currently 36 outside. Yeah. And that's it, though. I mean, that's the thing. I it's, mean, for November, yeah, we still, still had a high of 50-something today. And it's still warm, but it's uh, – and we got tracks that are still racing this weekend, believe it or not. Yeah, but for, like, wow. the last six you a, days. you had a balmy 50 today, hey? Yeah, balmy. Well, like, for the last six days, it's been, like, in the 70s, though. I had yeah. people telling me on my Facebook page last night that they were turning on their air conditioning because <laughs> there was no oh air moving. God. Yeah. Now today it's heat time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Heat's That's running this yeah. morning. That's the Midwest right there. You wake up and it's. We have it's all seasons in one day. One day. <laughs> By the yeah. time you hit lunch, you've already went through two seasons. How far are you from uh, where you live at? How far are you from Whistler? Uh, like an hour and a half. It's a random question, but those that follow mountain biking. And you, if you're in BMX, you should know about Whistler. It is, it's a, uh, it's uh the outdoor Rays MTB. Oh, yeah, big good bike way park. to put it. Bike mm-hmm. park. I dream of a day that the Canadian government will allow me in your beautiful country again. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a story that you can. Technically, that's technically an after show can, story. Mm. Oh, well, I don't know if I should be like saying mm. this, but no, bring you it. can technically fly in. You can't oh. drive across the border right now. No. But you can. No, he's, you, he's got legal issues. But it is, it is essential <laughs> travel. I got so, a guy. I don't know. If you've got weed issues, no. No, 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 no. It, no. <laughs> not weed issues. Anyway, <laughs> not weed issues. It, it, involved, it involves. Okay, a, you seem to know what it all entails. <laughs> I'm really good with the metric system, too. It was long before I met Melissa. But what I'm saying is, like, there was a guy. Don't bring me into His this. name was Tito. <laughs> Tito. Tito was from New Jersey, but not from New Jersey. Tito. <laughs> it was one of those stories. And a guy named Mario, Mario, and Tino. And then the next thing I know, <laughs> I can't go he to can't Canada. can't go to Canada. <laughs> And the whole thing, I was just wow. sitting at a strip club, and I'm like, wait, what? What? I can't be here. And they threw me in the Detroit River, uh, and now I'm not allowed to go back. And that's how that goes. Moses says the 85 BMX World Championships were there. Where? In New Jersey? Whistler. With Tito? Uh, no, in I'm Whistler. assuming he's talking about Whistler. Oh, Whistler. In Whistler? Are well, maybe serious? he's not. He, he'll clarify now that he's... You better Straight, straighten us out, Mo. You know, yeah. social media is a minute behind us, so he'll clarify in a second. Yeah, yeah. But bring that in here for us. But uh, Whistler is a beautiful place, Chris. We're going to look it up after show. Yeah. We'll, um, so we're should we go, put that on our to-do list? Our we're going, bucket we're going list there. Uh, we'll rent a helicopter. Uh, All right. We'll pick up Tara, and uh, she'll probably she's going she's going to kick our ass. She will. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a wonderful day at Whistler because on none of the jumps we can clear. No. <laughs> Yeah, me hey. neither. <laughs> We're all in the same boat, guys. What, what, what is your what, yes? Of, that's the best part about what ski is resorts it's that turn into. It's called It's what? It's called Apre. Is that the bar there? No. What? Apre. Like, oh it. fuck! I'm so <laughs> God damn, I'm so dumb. You're not dumb. What was that? What? <laughs> You're not dumb, oh dude. my what god! Is, You're not you dumb, brother. I I miss. I didn't hear what she said. It's it just, means Apre. That's what she said. It just basically means that you're going to drink. Uh, well, that's what we do every Wednesday. <laughs> do we have? Now you got a fancy effing word so for it. Got, yeah, you've got Apre. You are now sponsoring the drinking hour. We're going to make a note. I don't know how to spell it because I did better in the metric uh, system and counting. Uh, so <laughs> Apre brought to you by Tara uh, Giannis, Giannis Industries. Yeah. Uh, so... Speaking of that, yeah. there was your transition, Chris. I hope you caught that one. What? <clears throat> How we're going to go into Tara, Tara's uh, company. Her, yeah. All right. Do yeah. we want to run to a no, commercial no, or no. check social nope. or do we want to head right on over no. there? We're going to go right here. And I think that's a hard no. <laughs> no that's how it, that's so, so, this is live. This is how it rolls sometimes. We, we just YouTube up already and, gave up on us. <laughs> and it's going to get a Karen tomorrow. So let's talk about your uh, – your company that you've got and what you're doing with the adaptive mountain biking. 
Uh, yeah, so like basically after I got hurt, um, I wanted to, I felt at the time that I wanted to get back into mountain biking. Um, I, I think I felt that I wanted to just uh, kind of circling back to what I was saying before, just that was my identity. So I think I felt like if I did that, that I would feel more like myself. Um, and so I wanted to, to find a bike that could ride the trails that I wanted to ride. And I had a couple friends here once I moved to Canada um, in 2010 that had done a fundraiser to, and they found this bike. It was, it's actually designed and manufactured in Poland and it's called Sporton. And they made different types of bikes. And one of them was called the Explorer. So it's that bike that's on the screen right now. Uh, it's two wheels in the front, one in the back, and it's got full suspension. And so I was like, wow, you know, that looks super sick. So they got me that bike. I started riding, and then I noticed that every time I would go down the trails, somebody, whether they were able-bodied or not, um, most of the time able-bodied would be like, hey, I've got a friend. Where, you know, where'd you get that bike? I've got a friend that would want to ride that. That looks awesome. And it looked really aggressive and blah, blah, blah. And so um, it was sort of like, I don't know, I probably had the bike for maybe a year, year and a half. And they didn't have a rep here in Canada. Um, and so I basically cold called the guy, like the <laughs> owner. And I was like, hey, <laughs> my name is Tara and I want to sell your bikes here in <laughs> Canada. Mind you, I know nothing about selling anything. I mean, like I'd never had my own business I didn't know how to sell anything. Nothing. I just you're, was like, "You're a racer." Sorry, that's my dog. Hey, it's all right. <laughs> hey, Maya. Um, but yeah, so I was just like, "All right, I want to." And I was trying to. I don't know. I was just. <laughs> nope. Sorry, guys. We got to no, know what kind fine. of dog. What kind of dog? Uh, a terrier. Oh, just so a she's little... a, she's talkative. Yeah, super talkative. I mean, she's actually done pretty good tonight, got to say. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so anyway, like, I, I basically just, like, called the guy, and I was like, hey, you know, I want to – I'd like to start selling these. There's people here. This is, like, the mecca of mountain biking. Um, <laughs> you know, in, it, really, in Canada, is BC. It's Whistler. It's like you were saying, the North Shore. Um, and so um, I knew that people that were – that were sit skiing were would want to do something in the summer and i kind of this the sport was really growing so um and i think he it helped obviously that i had been a racer my whole life because i think he was like google who is this chick <laughs> who are you and, and so, what do right. you want like, <laughs> who are you and what do you want with my company um but i just i felt like there was something I felt like there was something there. And um, I felt like if people had the equipment um, that could ride these trails, that it would allow them to do things that I knew that I had always had fun doing. And so um, that's basically how it started. Again, I knew nothing about selling anything. Um, but my partner at the time, had um, a sales agency and so that's how I learned how to sell that's how I learned how how to um, kind of make it all work and how to promote and mm -hmm. it took me mm -hmm. a long time like I made a, I made so many mistakes I mean I still make mistakes but I mean those that was that was how I learned how that's, how to do it and that's so, how you learn um, right yeah yeah exactly well you... so I basically What's that? You um, you have a passion, and uh, as somebody that spent twenty some years in sales, you can be taught, take all the training, listen to all the coaches uh, for selling. But when you have a passion like you have, and you want to share that, you can make all the mistakes you want. You're still always going to end up on top. I, that's a really good way to put it. I mean, there's I I think I. I, I felt like um, the the yeah the passion that I had for it uh, and the and the desire that I um, had to try to make it succeed and to sort of open other people's eyes 
mainly at the time, adaptive organizations. So like Whistler Adaptive Organization has been around for like 30 years and they have brought sit skiing and, you know, hand cycling and kayaking and all these different sports to people who have had um, either cognitive, um, you know, issues or, um, you know, paraplegic, quadriplegic, CP. There's a whole range of, 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 um, of issues that people have had throughout their lives and they help them get out and do those things. And so I called them up and I just said, hey, I have this adaptive mountain bike. I'd love to bring it up there and show it to you. Again, it was a bit of a cold call and I was like, can I do that? And so I set up a meeting, did that. And then I think it was maybe a year to a year and a half later of just sort of massaging that to where they were like, okay, we're going to buy one. And, Cause I, I just, it was so weird. It was like, I had this vision in my head that I really felt was right. I mean, I don't know if I was just tricking myself. I obviously I, I wasn't because I see where it is now. But at the time, I just thought, if they can just get some bikes, these bikes will be rented out all summer. I feel it in my bones. I mm-hmm. know it. Mm-hmm. And I it right. just, I got, yeah, it's just kind of what ended up happening. So they have like three or four bikes now. And they are sold out all summer. They, rent, they get rented all summer long. And That's amazing. Um, wow. And if they had, honestly, if they had 10 more they would be re- still rented out all summer long. So it's just, it's more the funding around it and, mm-hmm. and being able to do that. But, but anyway, that's, that's basically how my business, my rep business got started. Um, and so I still do that. Um, I'm an athlete, but I also am fortunate enough that it's a job that I can have where I can work remotely. I don't have to be in BC to do it. Uh, and if you want to buy one of those bikes, um, you here in Canada, you have to buy it through me. So, okay. um, so how do they get a hold of you? Got, uh, so they can go to my website, Terry Giannis Industries, uh, which I am guessing is going to be somewhere. It is on right. your page. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yes, the whole show. <laughs> yeah. Um, or they can, yeah, you can. I think my you can just email me. My there's an email address on my website. You can email me through there. It comes directly okay. to me. And then, yeah, I can answer like any questions that you might have. And I do sell in the States because I was born and raised in California. I'm a dual citizen. So I do um, sell in the States also. Okay. Uh, so... And if anyone infringes on your territory, I know a guy named Mario will take care of it. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it rolls, man. Put, put Mario and Tito on them. That's what I'm saying. Good. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> You're, you're, uh, we want to, uh, man. <laughs> Chris is, yep. Uh, Chris, do you know Mario and Tito? No, I, I just had this vision. You got a vision of, my of head, Mario. Like, okay. like these guys stand there with a ball bat going, hey. Yeah, that's, that's it, man. This is, this is, you want terrible. a bike? You're going to buy it through her. That's how it's going to happen. You want a bike? You're talking to this lady right here. Heard you were and talking nobody to nobody else. I heard you were talking to somebody else. And then Chris yeah. sent us down here in his helicopter to make it uh, straighten this shit right. out. Right. <laughs> oh, uh, you also sell the, uh, you know what I mean? the, the high end uh, rims for the wheelchairs, too, right? Yeah, they're the yeah the wood rims. They're actually really awesome, especially when you live in cold weather places such as mm-hmm. Michigan. Mm. Um, so that was kind of the big thing for me was it gets pretty chilly here in BC, mm-hmm. and so when you're, you know, have your hands on metal, um, it's kind of crappy in the winter time. <laughs> so uh, I had this guy give me a call and he's like, hey, you know, can you try these out? And if you like them, we sell them for us. Uh, so I put those things on and I love them. Yeah. It's just like they're wood push rims. So hmm. it's not, they're not nearly as cold on your hands, uh, in the winter, which is really nice. That is a fantastic idea. Yeah. Uh, so for anybody that doesn't understand the workings of a wheelchair, th- there's actually two parts to the wheel. So m- nobody that's in a chair wants to actually have their hands on the part of the wheel that's touching the nastiness that we all walk through on a daily basis. <laughs> So I've there's never the, thought about that until there's this moment. The drive rim that is what you're looking at, or we're looking at, um, that that, at. <laughs> that is wood 
so just just to kind of give everybody some perspective you're not actually she's not actually talking that the wheel itself is wood but the part that she's hanging on to to drive her chair is is wood all right it that's looks like cool. uh the part that spins is actually carbon fiber <laughs> well that's, I that was could just be the case, go, too. I was just going to go there. I'm like, you get some carbon fiber rims on there? <laughs> well, the lighter the wheelchair, especially when playing sports, the Ooh, lighter the wheelchair yes. is probably... I, oh. I Tara could speak to that yeah. certainly way more than I could, but I would imagine that weight makes a difference then. Yeah, no, it definitely does. I mean, like my my day chair, the chair that I'm sitting in right now, um, is a carbon fiber chair, which is... Yeah, it's awesome. Like, it just makes things so much easier, just so much lighter, especially when I have to transfer into the car. You know, if I'm doing multiple transfers a day and I have to basically you take your chair apart, it's super easy. They're like, it's like a quick release on your wheels. So you just push the hub in, you pull it out, wheels come off, and then you pull the, the chair in. But it's um, the lighter, the better. Um, when you're when, you, when we're talking about sport chairs, though, like my basketball chair, um they do make some carbon chairs now. They're not fully carbon because the thing about carbon uh, is if you crack it, you're kind of screwed. So whereas like right. if you've got an aluminum frame or titanium or whatever, you can, you can weld it if you're traveling somewhere and it gets cracked. You know, like, I mean, if I travel to Europe and I go play a tournament and something cracks, you want to be able to fix it mm -hmm. while you're over there, um, if at all possible. So... Um, there's, there's, yeah, some different uh, applications, I guess you could say. <laughs> now, uh, can we show the basketball video? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Definitely. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna talk. We're, well, you guys are gonna get to see the the chair and the basketball and everything in the next video. In the meantime, uh, get those questions in, um, and we're gonna get to take a look at the wheelchair that we were talking about. <clears throat> that was the oh Jesus no oh, here it is all right we had multiple videos my name is Tara Giannis and my name is Tara Giannis and I play in Team Canada it means a lot to play for Team Canada it's uh I mean it's kind of been a, a, a kind of a whirlwind uh, and I'm just trying to enjoy every every second of it. I have a lot of uh, pride in that and, and representing Canada. My mom has always been a big motivator for me. A uh, single parent raised me on her own and I wasn't easy. So I, I always would look to her for, for advice. I think in general, people that push it. People that are always striving to be better. People that are staying after for practice. People that are working on different aspects of their game or, or in the gym. and um, People that are, um, that are positive. I feel like that's always something I can draw off of. Cover that. And we are back. And as always, we're going to slide in and ask Melissa, what do you got in the chat room? Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, caught off guard. I thought we, we were yeah, going to talk we're going to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, so uh, as what we're going to start talking about is that Tara is playing basketball for the Canadian team. So uh, Nick DeSanti had wanted to know what uh, had you moved to Canada, and I would imagine that was probably it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I actually, I got married in 2010. Well, even was, better. Yeah. So that was, at, I think at that point in time, I, um, I w it wasn't like a, a fight about whether I was going to live here or in California. I, I was, um, I was totally game for, for moving up here, even though I really didn't know anyone else um moving up here i mean peripherally i did but uh so that that's really what was the the impetus for the move up here awesome um, okay. yeah now so, did, did I, the canadian team reach out to you or did you i mean how, how did that all come about it hmm. sort of came about through like locally in the province here uh of bc we sort of start to play locally and then if they 
if you you know show promise or if, if they think that you are potentially a national team uh, could be a national team athlete then they get in touch with the national team and they're sort of like hey we have a player here that we we think you should bring in and so they would bring you into um, like in 2017 they brought me into uh, what's called an ID camp and so that's in Toronto so they flew yeah I flew to Toronto I went to this ID camp and then you sort of do some they put you through like a, a week of testing um, just to see sort of where you're at like your speed your agility your ball handling just across the board and then um, yeah from there uh, I was kind of hooked and I think at that point I didn't I didn't realize how much I missed a team sport. Tennis sure. is very much an individual sport. So yes. you're traveling yes. on your own, everything's on your own. Um, but it was really nice to kind of get back into that team event. Um, so that was really what kind of got me going with that. And then from there, I basically tried out for the team in 2018 and I made the team. And then I've been on it ever since. So, so we need to back up for a second. So how did you start playing basketball? How did that happen? So you're saying tennis. So we got mountain bikes, tennis, basketball. Yeah. Uh, obviously yeah. the mountain biking thing came to a halt. We, we just covered that. But then tennis and basketball, how, how did that come about after? Uh, well, so um, tennis actually was just super random. Um, my partner went for a walk took the dogs for a walk and there was an indoor tennis facility like two blocks from the house that we never knew was here oh. my birthday was coming up and went in and just said hey do you guys teach wheelchair tennis and the just so happened that the national team coach was in the lobby it was just one oh, of those wow. weird things and said yeah you know my name's tracy i'm the national team coach and so um then I was just, yeah, for my birthday, um, I got a lesson and I was just like, oh my God, this is so hard. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever tried tennis, but it's literally one yeah. of the hardest sports I've ever tried in my entire life. Oh, I would agree with I'm, you. Here's I'm, a little secret. I I'm did. terrible I played at it. tennis my freshman year in high school. Really? And? He it doesn't play anymore. It lasted long <laughs> enough. <laughs> it lasted a freshman year. It lasted <laughs> long <laughs> enough to be convinced to play tennis because it was good conditioning for hockey until the kid that I played in our rival school, you know, and everybody has him, yeah. which I probably played on like the eighth or ninth court because I was terrible, um, talked shit about my new racket and shoes. And then I yeah. learned that you can't fight <laughs> in tennis. You can't drop the gloves in Fuck. tennis. I mean, I waited till we we did Is that. Is this similar to the "there's no crying in baseball" rule? We, yeah, well, we, well, I thought we did that weird thing where uh, I went one side thinking he was going to go the other side of the net, but he came this side, and then he made a comment about my Andre Agassi shoes that I had. Oh uh, yeah, I remember so I that. grabbed that little bitch from Corona Schools. <laughs> That was our rival school, and uh, that that poor bastard probably got punched about 49 times before he knew the first one landed on him because it was up and over his head, and you just I just fought him like we fight in hockey. You, you hockey fought him. Yeah, and the you, bitch so about you got the jersey? You got I his... just grabbed him exactly. and just started just punching fall. the shit out of him. Because initially I'm oh like, if I God. hit him with my racket, like I just bought my racket. I'm not going like, to bust up my like Andre Agassi bucks, down man. It was like, racket. Nah. And that was my one. You really thought this through, eh? Yeah, because the whole match, he's talking shit. And I'm like, man, we're on like the last court. Like we're the worst of the, like we're the shit people <laughs> on this tennis team, okay? Like neither of us are going to get a varsity letter. Even if we manage to <laughs> oh, sit that and, was my and next flunk <laughs> and make like a fifth year, like we're not getting a varsity letter. So I'm thinking, I don't understand why you're, I'm like, you're just taking this whole rivalry thing a little too much. But I'm like, when we cross nets, I want to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> And then I had to, All right. and this is before cell phones. So I had to go into their school and call my parents, which I had to take like the walk of shame and be like, Hey mom, dad, you got to come pick me up from Corona. <laughs> and the best part was <laughs> the side story here is the best part. Of my dad's like, he picks up the phone 
And he was like, you better beat his ass. <laughs> like, just come get me, Dad. Just come. Get well, me. we're not picking you up. No. You're walking home. Mm-mm. That's what, that's, that, that's hockey, though. So, yeah, that was my, mm. so I do know a little bit about tennis because I spent four months before my second match and getting thrown off the tennis team. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. That is not going to be part of the trivia next week, all right? Just so you guys know. It should be. But, yeah. Uh, we want to well, see ten- film of that, ten- man. Tennis is a pretty tough game. Man. It's so gnarly it's- as hell. People don't understand. It is a very, yeah. very intense competitive sport. Sorry well, to cut you off. Let, like, let alone the pros make chair, it though. look so easy, but it is not. It is anything but easy. Go to go yeah. to your sporting goods store, whatever it is, Dicks or Dunham's or whatever. Right now, buy yourself a racket and just try to hit the ball when you toss it up in the air. Go ahead. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. And you did it. Let alone being seated. Exactly. That's where. Thank that's you. right. Yeah. That's where I was going. Yeah, we were like, all hitting there. Let alone. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Well, I didn't say I was like fantastic at it, but I mean, like, I got the ball over the net every once in a while, so it was good. Do you ever want to um, fight anybody though? <laughs> no, no, no fights. Like, if you ever no do, fights. I got a guy. Tino and Mario, yeah. they'll come out. Tino, Tino and Mario. I know. <laughs> All right, you yeah. guys. All right. So, so tennis. So, how far did we go with tennis? How, how, how? Uh, uh tennis. Uh, I actually I won the nationals here in uh, in Canada uh, the last year that I played, which I was twenty sixteen. I think I won okay. it maybe 2017, so and then three, four um, years ago. Yeah, and then uh, there were there were some players here in BC in British Columbia that were basketball players that um, had won multiple gold medals at the Paralympics, and I had known them through tennis. That's how I met them, and they were just always telling me, and they're like, "You should go. You should try out for basketball. I think you'd be really good at basketball." And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I just felt like it was, I knew, again, like I knew what that, how to play and what that felt like. But eventually I kind of got into it here, um, like provincially. And then, yeah, from there, I just kind of kept with it. (laughs) Yeah, the rest is, yeah, kind of history. So, and and last year in 2019, we went to the Para Pan American Games, which was in Lima, um, Peru, awesome. and that was our that was our qualifier for the Americas. So it's the qualifier to qualify for the Paralympic Games. So you had to finish in the top two in order to qualify for Tokyo. Mm-hmm. What would have been to- Tokyo 2020, which is now Tokyo 2021, um, and so we went up against the U.S. in the finals. And uh, we beat them. Yay! Have, God damn it. <laughs> so, I mean, either way, we were going to qualify because yes. we were in the finals. Yes. But mm-hmm. you know, it was it was kind of nice to get the W. So, um, and so, they're sure. uh, they're such a good team. They're the gold medalists from Rio. Like they're ah. a really really good team. So for us to come in, it was a tight game. We only won by three points. Like it was a, such a tight. Those are the kind of games that you want to be. A part yeah. of you don't want to blow sure. out like you don't want to no, win by like fifty points. Like you want a game that's like neck and neck the whole time. People are on the edge of their seats, and it yeah. was one so of you'll those games. you'll both go to Tokyo then. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Well, congratulations! Yeah, congratulations! That's, that's super awesome. huge. Just, like, I think it just hit me like that. You have a, a current future Olympian right now. Talking. Yeah, correct. Yes, sir. Well, I'm gonna go Another home. sleepless yeah. night I'm for you. Go <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> Holy shit. How did uh, our ragtag show end up with this greatness? I don't know, but hey. <laughs> this what, you know what it is? Reverse this. sales tactics. Ah. Got, uh, Marie helped, and then we convinced. So, <laughs> again, Tara, thanks you, Thanks again for joining us tonight, okay? Uh-huh. Um, we're going to have part two. Um with you, yeah. by the way, if you're we, down for we'd that. We'd love to have you come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. I'd love to. <clears throat> so you know what we call that? Uh, part do. Nope. No. Oh. No. Yeah. You know what? Wait, I will. she's in Canada. No, That's no, no, a little... no. But she's already ingrained because I've heard A 
come out of your mouth. Hell yeah. <laughs> several times. Mouth? This, yes, oh, yeah. ma'am. Hey. Yes, ma'am. Several <laughs> times. Says, my mom's like, you sound so Canadian. I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, she's ingrained. <laughs> you need now, a couple yeah. of beers, eh? Uh, personal question. Oh, yeah, eh? yeah, right? Oh, uh, is is your, your wife able-bodied? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, 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 she is. Uh, and I met her when I was 17. So I've wow. known her for such a long time that when we oh, wow. kind of bumped into each other, it was at the um, trade show in Vegas. Okay. The, you know, me. every year and Interbike? bumped into her after I'd been injured. And so anyway, that's how we started no, to see, cause chat again. Justin and I are big suckers for that, you know second go around kind of thing so <laughs> we had a, i like to uh, ask really? <laughs> yeah. yeah we are we are eight ten. well uh, yeah 18, 18 years, years now to yeah. the date that we... wow congrats yeah. thank you thank you yeah. so you said you got married in thank you 2010 yeah 2010 okay wow awesome awesome yeah. awesome yeah. um cool deal 10 years yeah you uh want to roll into the news rumors and gossip that we uh, uh, we have like two things we got to talk about Tara wait, real quick and was our that news a play on gossip. words with the wheelchair roll into <laughs> <laughs> bet she's never heard that one before <laughs> I mean not nearly as much as now I have the meat sweats from you saying that <laughs> Chris is good. Wow, we double whammy. Dude. We had to start dangling some like sausages from the top. Uh, I know. So, that's, that's just, it just sounds. I, what they give you is a card. It's, 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 it's red on one side and green on the other. When you you're have, done, you're you red. To, you Nobody red. knows what we're talking uh, about. Uh, well, I, they might not, so look oh. it up. The, they'll, uh, I they'll feel get... a new uh, secret word feature coming up. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, I cannot, I, we have to think of a great one when Tara comes back on. <laughs> all, right, so um, all right, news, rumors, I'm and gossip. Getting up here. Let's see here. Oh, um, yeah, we have to deter from there and go here. <sighs> okay, we talked about that. We did. But you don't re like. Do we have our scene? It might be on the hard drive. So. Oh. All right. So we're skipping. We have, we don't this. have we don't have the Jeremy Ames voicemail segment because uh, tonight what happened was Jeremy works in Traverse City by the way Tara, and um, yeah. it's a busy time and uh, he works in a restaurant and he actually has a baby a little baby on the way little on the baby. way on little the way baby. don't freak him out yet when do they uh, when do they do. Well, I believe that they're inducing the her next week. And yes. we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> well, I guess we can say. Oh, go ahead, he I'm was. Uh, he, week after week, always delivers um, these voicemail segments. Yeah. And um, there's probably one on my phone I just haven't noticed because he is dedicated. We're going to give him oh, that. 100%. Yeah, we got to give him, yeah, yeah, but, give uh, him kudos for that. He, he's, every, what are we, 43 shows in a row he's had a voicemail. More than that because he used to do Friday nights too. So. Oh, that's right. Wow. Yeah. Um, Dedicated. He he literally gets. Uh, he doesn't even get a free number plate from Marie calling him an asshole. <laughs> but you know what he does have is a sponsor, which we can plug them really quick. Yellow Cat Gate System. Yellow Cat Gate Systems. Jeremy Ames voicemail sponsor. There he is. So, so we got you... that. We worked that in. So now we're going to go to the news, rumors, and gossip section. All right. Here we go. It'll be quick. Where is it? I lost it. I hope to God I got it on the screen. Throw down. All right. So, you know that young lady right there? That's not. Who is that? Initials are SF. 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 Sophia. Was writing for GD. <laughs> well, I see that, but oh my. I honestly, it's like, I, I don't know who that is. This Sophia Foresta, women's pro. Yeah, Sophia has Foresta. Has left GT after 12 years. Yeah, shocking. But on to bigger, better things, right? Where, mm. Well, it doesn't say that in the notes here. I Because I needed you to summarize it. Okay. <laughs> I, done. Check. Done. Okay. Right. So, but do this we know, Sophia's like, leaving Do we GT? know where she's going? <laughs> no. No. She's just no. leaving. No. No, that we is just, the truth. I'm out. But, Boom. Here's the Her teaser. Facebook says she's leaving, yeah. Yeah, here's the teaser. Her brother rides for GT2, but he's over on the mountain bike side. Okay. Rick, right. thank you. Rick from Beer Budget BMX. I got to make sure we plug Beer Budget hey. BMX out of California. 
check those guys out. Yeah, and he's going to have the raddest jerseys, Tara, and I'll negotiate that you and I get our own jerseys for Beer Budget BMX along with Chris and everybody else. Oh, I should with the show. get one of them. Uh, <laughs> I just said that. Chris, I feel like we just got ousted. Yeah. <laughs> I said I'd negotiate with Tara. Melissa and, and I got gypped on that deal. <laughs> We're not going to get Marie one. We're going to actually Marie's is just going to say asshole on the back of it. Um, so hers going to have like a Michigan State logo or Sparty dude oh, on it or something. Uh, yes, yeah, hers will have a Sparty right, logo. But we're next talking year. about Sophia. Right, Sophia is Sophia. leading GT. Uh, her brother is on big things uh, on their, uh, the mountain bike side. So awesome. rumor has it, according to Beer Budget BMX, she might be following there. Ah, she's heading over to the mountain oh, bike side. Eh? Perhaps. Perhaps. All she right. would be following in the lines of our guests this evening. Nice. Well um, done. That's where the money is. And then our second segment that we like to do uh, is the <clears> – <throat> we like to do a shout-out. We like to do a spotlight for other people that are doing things within BMX – that are you know showcasing the sport right so uh we're lucky we started this thing whatever we're doing right now and <laughs> whatever we're doing right now we it's uh, a live stream man oh god we found all about live this evening with youtube so <laughs> high five bmx uh the cool thing about high five bmx is they're an instagram channel it's not like a show it's not a facebook oh, uh, live okay. gotcha. thing they're just an Instagram channel, and what they do is um, their their project is is about photography and interviewing women and girls who race BMX. And the whole channel was started by f the photographer and BMX racer Chrissy Piper. Uh, she's a badass, uh, much like our guest this evening, and we appreciate what she's doing in you know spreading the goodwill and you know getting people recognized and the girls recognized in our sport so high five bmx give them a like give them a follow over on instagram.com at high five bmx you got birthdays buddy all right i'll do my best here so we got a whole list of folks having a birthday this week top guy's my boss by the way matthew <laughs> panel 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 when i edit this i'll make sure that he it's right you call him the wrong name and right, you want me to start over so it sounds like, yep. hey birthdays this week we have matthew panel he's a super awesome guy i hear uh <laughs> my boss edison edison shankel from shankel. richfield park bmx ron uh, garman oh Chris now you okay now you got him all right you can take after that uh all right i'm gonna butcher this one gilbert Del delon Junior. Gilberto Delone Jr. I oh race boy, him I really screwed at every that up, national. I? Son of a bitch, so fast. Dude's fast, eh? We had a photo finish down in uh, uh, Rock Hill. Okay. So you, you need to work on that gig. All right, then we have Gavin. <laughs> Evidently, my gates are what our guest said hers were when she raced BMX. I go up, everybody else goes out. Yeah, absolute yeah. garbage. I do the same thing. Shoot, I have trouble just standing <laughs> up in the gate. All right. Then we have uh, over on the west side of the state of Michigan, we have Gavin Turtle Smith. Anything but slow. Anything. And then we're going to skip. Guy, we're going to go Jacob Stoffel. Stoffel. Craig Dragna, our Resident? trivia question master. Oh, my goodness. This guy, Tara, wins like all of our trivia. He knows everything from the inception a, of BMX till he, now. He, he just joined a, the chat too. So. He is an old happy school, birthday, Craig! Happy birthday, old school buddy. expert right there, man. I've seen yeah. him at some of these old school things. He's got he some does. nice bikes. Our next and... birthday is Trek <laughs> Vandekar, and believe it or not, Vandekar. Trek, his grandpa owned the biggest bike shop in Lansing, Michigan. And guess really? what? kind of a dealership he was a track dealer yes track dealer you know uh, why he didn't I'm like a freaking genius over here yeah he didn't like schwinn, <laughs> he didn't <laughs> like schwinn. and uh oh my goodness. happy birthday travis black uh travis we black. appreciate you oh okay. you have one Let's last birthday that. chris that you have to give a shout yes, out yes i do so we're gonna give a special happy birthday to the guest what MC. Would you, MC, He's MC at Mighty Mo's BMX Cruise. The one I'm just going to say, you guys will know who I'm talking about if I say Hollywood. Mm, it Mr. is Mr. Mike Miranda. Which we have one more commercial to do after this, and then we come back for trivia. 
All right. So happy birthday, Hollywood. Hey, Tara, you want to join us on a cruise? Mm. <laughs> I, I know. I heard about the cruise. You. And, Wait, oh, hey. I'm sure Mo is. Hey. I'm sure Mo's been in your ear already. She plays basketball. <laughs> yeah, I bet yeah. she can throw a wicked Ooh, dodgeball. Do- yeah, how's your hey, dodgeball um, game? She yeah. plays basketball. She can throw a wicked I, I feel dodgeball. Like it'd be, I feel like it'd be pretty strong. Yeah. yeah. You're all... I mean, I don't know if I'm getting out of the way of any balls, but I think I could throw, <laughs> I think I could throw one for we can, right. we Justin can, and I will block. We can sacrifice Chris. Um, <laughs> I'll block for you. Perfect. <laughs> but if you and the wife need to come. <laughs> if you're on the trip, yeah. you're automatically on the ATB team. Oh, yeah, 100%. You're gonna for be sure, the, for sure. You're going to be the gunner. We're cherry picking. <laughs> <laughs> gunner. All right, we're going to hit the last commercial, Ooh. which right. is, who do you think it is? Oh, man, we got to be talking about Mighty Moe's Caribbean imagine. Cruise. Attention, BMXers, this is your riders meeting. Come join us on Mighty Moe's BMX Cruise 2021, brought to you by T-Bone BMX. Cruise to the Bahamas September 13th through the 17th, 2021, aboard Royal Caribbean's beautiful Navigator of the Seas, with stops in Nassau, and a perfect day at Coco Cay. We are pleased to bring you BMX Hall of Fame inductee Stompin' Stu Thompson as our guest speaker. If BMX had a Mount Rushmore, this living legend's face would be the first face etched in stone. We will also be honoring BMX humanitarian and rider Howard Cato. Our MC for the Stu Thompson event will be none other than Hall of Famer Hollywood Mike Miranda. Be part of the ultimate BMX pit party away from the track. All the fun of hanging with your friends, just like at the races, but without all the stress of competition. Unless you take part in the All Things BMX Dodgeball Tournament, where you just might get broke off. This is a must-attend event for any BMX enthusiast. The Caribbean had better be ready. Riders ready? Watch the waves. We are back, and we are talking off camera, as you can tell with Chris, all about balls to the face and dodgeball. Dodge balls. Grown dodge men balls. playing with their balls. That's what they like to do in ATV. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> shit, Excuse I know, me. Man. I'm just summarizing. I'm was, summarizing. Man, People yeah. want to know. The general public wants to know, and that's These what it questions is. questions the public wants to so know. So we got to know... Um, you got plenty Are you of time. Ask me about balls. No, I was going to ask you about a cruise. I'm not going to ask I you about know balls. Nothing about those. No, no. We're talking about dodgeball. We're talking about a cruise. Okay, okay, okay. There might hey, be little focus. kids listening to this focus. show. What the fuck? It's, hey, it's ten after there ten. There it is. There it is. Chris. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Okay, so keep it kid friendly, people. Is there people. a chance we can get you on the cruise anytime soon? I think it really depends on COVID. Yeah, well, fair. it's not it really till September, <laughs> September yeah, well, 2021. Other, so we got other, some time. The other kicker is the Paralympics. Oh, fair. Oh, yeah. that's a good yeah, excuse, so, Tara. Hey, Mo, yeah. way to go with giving me answers. Like, way to go with the me. timing, Mo. No, he prepped me for answers. He's like, hey, you know, it's cool. Everything will be fine. They got rooms. It's fine. They got bigger you, hallways Justin, and all this shit. I'm like, you can't use that as an excuse. Nope. Sorry. He's an Olympian, man. How the? How I know it doesn't it? apply to you. No. I have a feeling you have I'm to gonna go. be in Japan at that particular time. It does probably that sound like you will about be. Yes. Right, yeah. But it it sounds like a pretty amazing. No. Which trip, gives us even more to cheer on. There's going to yeah. be a, another one the year after, so may, maybe we can work something out there. Okay, now we're talking. All right, but can we we could call you while you're at the Olymp. Olympics, right? No, she's got to focus. Now man. you understand you're on a boat in the Just middle of the ocean. We and technology, the I know, but technology doesn't quite work exactly <laughs> like I think. Yeah, you're I just learned it tonight to. it doesn't work worth a shit, even <laughs> <Yeah>. hardwired. <laughs> but we could call, maybe, YouTube. possibly, in the middle of whatever, possibly. whatever ocean the we're in. The dodgeball tournament. Can't man. see the shore quite, from. Quite possibly, the Gulf check of Mexico. The it's the Caribbean ocean. But yeah, I mean, we. How many time zones are we? apart right now four or three yeah three? but Give japan's a little bit further yeah a, know, it's, add it's another not, one it's really not <laughs> another bad. one it's or, just, or many it's just one over right <laughs> just one, yeah. like you know, eight hours from now we, we Our, judge everything from here yeah we do so from like, here time, it's like, where how where, far is that where, it's where, that where <laughs> you know i'll and, get you a map We'll cut it. it well, I'll sh- I'll break it down. Apparently, I, I need to go to Salvation Army and it, find you one of them globes. It doesn't matter because I can't. I, I, it doesn't really matter because I 
can't really read anyway all that well. Stop so. it. That is not but true. Speaking of different time zones, uh, our guest for next week uh, lives in a crazy different time zone. What is it, like eight hours in front of us right now here in uh, Eastern time zone? Yeah, probably six or seven at least. Right. Yeah. So the, the, the goat himself, uh, Bart Zhang, is going to be our guest. And what we've got to do, uh, Tara, we have to – the logistics are not worked out just for those of you listening now, uh, <laughs> but it's going to happen is uh, Bart DeJong from fat BMX, the longest running BMX news uh, site in front of Jerry by a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, he's oh, going to be our guest. Dude. We got to do, we're going to do the show on Sunday and uh, we're going to have a, uh, we're going to stream it on uh, Wednesday with a little twist. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Being we're speaking of different time zones. Oh, yeah. We'll figure it out. Have you figured out the chat room, how we're going to do that yet, Chris? Mm, oh, on no, th- next yeah, week or this week? Yeah, it's on you anyway. Um, mm, oh, it's on me. <laughs> <laughs> My turn. Hey, it's Melissa's turn. Here we go. Turn. I think it's time to hit the... There mm. we go. It is. Where's the... Yeah, we need to... <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh. <laughs> is that playing or no? No. no. <laughs> We're not hearing anything, dude. Okay, I got my question. Right. I'm ready. So it's time for <laughs> Melissa's trivia question. What do you got, Melissa? I love you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, we got a prize package? We do. I have a whole package of stickers. Oh, I hey, you have got a helper back there, too. A, I do have a helper back here. Can you say hi? <laughs> I have a Heavy Pedals episode. Wait, no. See, I got episodes stuck in my Issue head. four. Issue number four. And FYI, too, um, anybody who's looking for some Heavy Pedals gear, uh, we just got word that uh, Chuck and friends are uh, clearing out their inventory. Oh, so go to their website. They got a 20% off code. Um, get your issues, get your heavy pedals gear. Um, the other thing I'm also giving away uh, is an extra shirt that I purchased um, for the Becky Stevens oh, Breast Cancer Memorial. Those are nice shirts. Uh, these are, you know, kind of one of a kind here in case anybody. Oops. Sorry, Murray. I knocked over the unicorn. Um <laughs> Kind of one of a kind. If you didn't happen to be there, you can get your hands on this gear pedal in pink we got back there. Um, and anyway, so that means that we put an extra donation into the um, breast cancer awareness. We were working with the National Breast Cancer Society, I believe. We, we made a yes, donation we too. Did. So. And if you don't know, uh, Melissa, yeah. you want to tell everybody why that's a big deal for oh, you, hon? Well, because as of... Halloween. I am now officially an eight-year survivor of breast there cancer. There you go. So there we go. <laughs> so yeah, it is a cause awesome. very near and dear to my heart, and yep. that's why this little princess gets to be here too. So, um, all right. So I am kind of switching things up a little bit, and I'm going to tap into everybody's brains and ask you a question from last week's episode. Uh, let me clear my chat with here our... with Al Royval. Right. So I would like to know, we would like to know, what inspired Al Roybal oh, to start yes. riding BMX? Ooh, can I answer? No. no. <laughs> but I do. God, I we know it. <laughs> so who is going to know the answer to that well, question? Do you, do you, have we'll you send met... you a prize pack. Don't worry, Tara. Have, have you met Al, <laughs> Tara? I, you know what? I may have over the years. I I don't remember, Does the, but I do you did recognize the, the last, name? I yeah, I do. Okay, um, but she was, listening. and I also I listened last week. So. Ah, okay, so you know oh, a little well, bit. Thank about you for it. listening. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Mm, there's a couple close Wait, ones. She, she listened last week, and she still agreed to come on the show. Um, <laughs> well, funny thing, she didn't get a Charlie chance. Charlie committed. She's she's committed like she is in everything. However, mm. um, she. Uh, she didn't get to listen to it live. Dang, so, Marty. Uh, we got really, uh, we, we had our call, the pre-guest show call. Right. And it was already too late for her to quit. So oh, okay. She was already locked in. She was in. already <laughs> locked in. And I was like, hey, here's the episode from Al Roybal, which immediately starts with. Yeah. It's Lord knows what. 
Oh, man. It was... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It was a great show. And um, just like yeah. this evening, Tara, we can't tell you how much we appreciate you being on. And this always happens. We never get enough time to talk about everything. So um, if you are uh, oh. able to, we'd love to have you back on for Moto2 or... What is yeah. it going to be called? No, that's what we call it. That's oh, there was a name. She had the name for the get, thing. I forget what it was. Well, there uh, I just uh, said uh, part do. Part but do. Moto 2 part sounds do. good. That's it. Moto do. <laughs> well, Moto yeah, we, do. Is, it, is that French for two? Because you are in Canada. I mean, yeah. It's French for two. Yeah, drink. but I know no French. It was. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's like my, my extent of French is French fry and French toast. So. That's about, neither that's yeah. neither of which are French. I know, but that's <laughs> I, I, that's all I got. <laughs> Who uh, did we? Because French fries in France are chips. They're anyway. chips. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's like I tell my kids I know how to speak Spanish: taco, burrito, nacho. I what mean, that's f- about all I got. Essay, I mean, essay, I, essay. I know how. And, and I know how to order in France, food. <laughs> they call a grilled cheese a croque monsieur. I thought it was a Royale with cheese. No, that would be a Big Mac. It's a Big oh, Mac, that, dude. Yeah. The Pulp Fiction. Or a cheeseburger, Come whatever. On. No, I'm not. A grilled I'm, cheese. I told Coke you, Melissa you. is is been <laughs> culturing me, and it was a very, very like low part. <laughs> and she's done amazing. Wait, amazing. my part's been low. No, or? where I started. <laughs> you have done an amazing job. It's been a huge step. The fact that oh. I know what a Brazilian steakhouse is is amazing. Fair. That's a, a fair point. Oh, I thought you were going to just stop at Brazilian. <laughs> That's what I thought for a second, I mean, too. he may or may not know that either, but <laughs> we're not discussing that. <laughs> Yo. Fuck if I can find Brazil on a map anywhere. I don't know. <laughs> Unless Marie. Pablo Escobar hey, had anything to do with it, I don't know. We want to hear it's Marie's way shout out. Down here. <laughs> oh, shit. It's south. Let's just say that. <laughs> is, it by Col- so, is it by Cuba? It's south of Cuba. Yeah, like, we gotta get her off the yeah. freaking call. Yeah. She's a yeah. she's really uh, stirring. St- uh, oh shit! So, so Tara, do you have anyone you'd like to thank? Any shout outs you'd like to make before we get uh, to our you winner? Know, Marie mentioned this, but I honestly, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not uh, super big at plugging. Maybe I should be more. Uh, probably Shimano, who's they've always really stuck with me you know like okay. smith optics like those guys have been always really great um but just honestly just friends and family who've um just really been there uh just sort of throughout the years that's to me those are those are the people that mean the most to me um and uh, just helped me through some really tough times but um yeah like i i don't really have uh like sponsors per se but um okay. Well, yeah. friends, family, that's always good. Next time you're on, yeah. we're going to ship you 16 hats, and <laughs> you can put them on. Switch them each time. <laughs> I'd like to yeah. this guy and this guy Perfect. and this guy. <laughs> At least there'll be four, because I can think of uh, Gate 9, Mighty Moe's, a- uh, ATV, and uh, T-Bone. T-Bone. So you'll have at least four hats to yeah. so a show to. So Moses is echoing exactly what I was going to say, but mm-hmm. he is wishing you good luck in the Paralympics next year. We are all yep. going to be watching and rooting you and your team on. Yes, and, uh, we are sure, for we're sure. Definitely we're proud will. of you, and we're impressed with how far you've come and everything that you've overcome, and, and we appreciate that. Um, before you sign off, Chris, though, I mm-hmm. do want to congratulate Marty. Oh, that's where we're Who's another one of our frequent uh, and, and long-time Trivious. listeners. So thank you, Marty. Uh, so the reason why Al shared with us that he got into BMX, I was thinking – to impress a girl, but Marty said to you know basically to impress his high, high, his high school girlfriend. So we're gonna take that as an answer. And Marty, next time I see you, um, mm-hmm. which will probably be Saturday at uh, Capital City, hopefully weather prevailing, they're gonna be racing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll have All your right. prize pack for you up in Lansing. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, okay. everybody. All right. So are we we good? Well, any other shout outs, Tara? You're good to go. Uh, no, I mean, it just, uh, you know, to you guys for having me on, I really appreciate it. Um, and just well, you thank know, you. taking the time to ask me some questions and, you know, well, thank- so yeah. Well, thank you for spending time with us. It's been great to get to know you and, you know, we're, we're going to have you back. So that's awesome stuff. Awesome. 
All right. So again, we want to make sure everybody is following us on Facebook. Give us a like, share us with your friends, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, which isn't working right now, but that's a YouTube deal. It's not our fault. What um, do you do? You know what I mean? You can't help it. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, share it with your friends, share the show. Um, so all of our... We're going to... We'll, we'll have the show on YouTube. It will be yeah. put onto YouTube once YouTube gets themselves straightened back out. <laughs> so all the live stream versions of the show are sponsored by bmxmania.com. Uh, thank you, Jerry Lendrum. We appreciate that. Uh, the podcast version of the show, you can pick up anywhere you get your podcast. Download it. Uh, we're even on Amazon Alexa. You can go, yo, Alexa, play the show. It'll turn on upstairs. Oh, Hey, Alexa, play no, all not. things BMX show. There you go. Boom. Um, so you can check us out there. We're sponsored. All of our podcasts are sponsored by the BMX In Our Blood podcast show, which is sponsored by our good friend Joe Doherty. Uh, if you have any news, rumors, or gossip you want to share with the show, email us. you got an event going on at your track. We want to know about it. We want to share it with all of our viewers. Uh, all things BMX show at gmail.com. And with that, Tara, thank you again for joining us tonight. We appreciate you taking the time out of your evening. And everybody else that stuck around with us in the chat, thank you, everybody. God bless. Have a great night. Yeah.